Good evening, lovely people of the East End, and welcome to the Queen Mary University Arts One Pinter Studio. My name is Roxana. I am the festival director for Freedom and, the Freedom and Independence Theatre Festival. We're really pleased that the London Mangla Press Club can come here tonight to give their musings about a very, very, or oh, several important topics. Um, just before we start, a bit of housekeeping. Um, if you've got mobiles, if you can put them on silent, please not on vibrate. If you can put them on silent, that would be much appreciated. Um, I've got to say this legally, if you can, please wear a face mask. Um, if not, if that's okay. That sounds like a very Boris message, doesn't it? It's just mixed <laughs> with yes and no. <laughs> um, so, uh, this, is, um, this is our fourth year with London Bangla Press Club, and we're really pleased that they come back every year, and we're still friends every year, actually. So, well, that's always a good thing. Um, um, I would like to hand over the mic to Mohammed, I mean, the General Secretary of London Bangla Press Club, and um, I will be back because I'll be sort of um, supporting the long table later on. But um, Mohammed Jubair. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Ruxana. Good evening, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the London Bangla Press Club, can I welcome you to the today's uh, conference on Freedom 50, Bangladesh Independence and uh, Theatre Festival. Uh, I want to Thanks everyone for your kind attendance and special thanks to Ruxana, our one and only art officer of London Bala of Chahamless and also Tracy uh, from the Equinder University for supporting us. We'll start with the National Anthem and uh, Rupi Abba, our executive member Rupi Amin uh, with uh, Mustafa Milanbhai and Papu. Can I request all the executive member to join uh, for the national anthem? Thank you. presentation from three special guests and first uh, Bangladesh World and Independence Rule of Media in UK by Burbul Hassan, editor E South Asia, we all know him and then we will have another one uh, Freedom 50 Achievements and Challenge of Bangladesh by Fahan Masood Khan, the head of programs of uh, Channelist Television and finally we will have the presentation from uh, senior journalist uh, Udo Shankar Das on press freedom and we'll have the round table discussion also with that. Let's start with a welcome speech by our Honorable President, Janab uh, Imra Bilhak Chaudhary. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, welcome you all uh, today uh, for our uh, uh, freedom and independence uh, of Bangladesh. Uh, this year, uh, the Tarhamris Council has taken a theme of freedom and independence, and uh, it's a uh, pleasant coincidence for us because we are celebrating our golden jubilee of Bangladesh independence. And it's, uh, we're very fortunate that we have been given this slot to present 
this program to you today. Um, <clears throat> we have chosen uh, the subject of press freedom being the press club in London and uh, one of our core value of independence or in the, our freedom struggle was the democracy and freedom of speech or freedom of expression is one of the important element to that. So we have decided to, while we celebrate the 50th year of Bangladesh, uh, 50 years ago when the struggle began, when the uh, war began, uh, we had, actually our predecessor had a very dark hours. Uh, we had to pass a dark hours. Many of us here today were not um, born at that time. Uh, we were very little, very small children. And uh, many of us have not thought that we have come, we will come this far. And many of us here today will not be uh, here in this world for another 50 years. So it is a very, very significant, significant moment for us uh, that we are completing the 50th half century of, of, of a country uh, which we fought for. I think uh, no one will take any offense. Uh, there is a significance uh, between the independence of uh, British India and Bangladesh. Uh, India and Pakistan were uh, independent, became independent with a declaration by the British Parliament where Bangladesh, though it's small, and uh, we became independent again in 1971 through proclamation. On 7th of March, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman has declared the independence of Bangladesh. And that's how we've, the struggle began. We fought for it. We lost lives. There are a lot of uh, millions of fallen heroes. And then we have achieved it. So there is a, I, I think this is, the, the, there's a marked significance between those two independence. And I think we should treasure this through our whole life. Uh, we have uh, dedicated this, this day with, uh, uh, with the, with the big, as a diaspora, we are really proud that uh, Britain uh, has played a very vital role in bringing up the genocide and the atrocities were taking place in Bangladesh for the first time. I think Sunday Times was the first newspaper which has uh, given the outside world the details story of, of genocide and the killings. And uh, followed by uh, Sunday Times, there are lots of other newspaper and media houses has actually brought these stories from Bangladesh to the world where, by which the uh, international consensus grew and we have achieved a lot of support for Bangladesh, independence Bangladesh, independent Bangladesh. So we thought this is a fitting case for us to present today uh, the EU the media role uh, for our war and in support of Bangladesh's Bangladesh and its independence war. We have also uh, have uh, a particular situation in Bangladesh, around the world actually, not only in Bangladesh, around the world, the press freedom, uh, the media freedom is in, in very fragile state. There are, there are lots of reasons, and uh, Udayda will definitely explain, explore those uh, factors uh, in his uh, presentation. But we thought that while we celebrate, we should also be a, have the ability to self-criticism. We should criticize, and we should look into this, and we should move forward from this. The core value was uh, to achieve the freedom, was, uh, was to, uh, to establish the democracy, and Media freedom is one of the vital elements to that. Uh, I would like to uh, 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 thank all of my guests and who will be presenting here, and also the Queen Mary University, Rukshana and Mushahid Ahmed, to help us to arrange this. Uh, I would like to conclude by saying this, that uh, uh, today is the, is the very special day for us to remember our foreign uh, fallen heroes. Uh, we should uh, remember their sacrifice um, and uh, respect and honor their dedication and treasure their memory. And the bravery they have shown, that has created Bangladesh. That's why we are independent Bangladesh today. We can celebrate. And I think these feelings should be cherished 
by the generations to come. Thank you very much for attending today's event. Thank you. Thank you, President. Now, our first presentations. Bangladesh War of Independence, Rule of Media of the, uh, Media of the UK. And we'll have a uh, presentation from Bulbul Hassan. Uh, we all know Bulbul Bhai for his uh, presentation styles and journalistic skills. Bulbul Hassan is editor for the E South Asia. Bulbul Bhai. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, say a few words about uh, the role of media during 1971 in the UK. And um, when you talk about the role of media, I think it's very important to uh, understand the context of 1970 war. Uh, and starting with the summary, let me just um, quote a research from Harun al Rashid. He wrote a book titled British Perspectives, Pressure and Publicity Regarding Bangladesh 1971. He says uh, in Britain from March to December 1971, the Times published 29 editorials. As you can see, the Daily Telegraph published 39, the Guardian 37, Observer 15, and the Financial Times 13. BBC broadcast at least eight episodes of Panorama, very famous investigative current affairs program on the air. But what I have found while researching on the coverage and the content of, of the coverage, I've seen the reports neither initially focused on the humanitarian grounds nor did they support the struggle of Bangladeshi people. So that is from a bird's eye view. And the research I have mentioned earlier, it says the content of the reports of New York Times or the Sunday Times or Times uh, analyzing the front page, it says the 34% 30, of the uh, coverage dealt with military conflict dimensions of the crisis and 30.5% 30, 30 of its potential consequences Excuse me. And only 16.8% of the stories focused on human interest stories relating accounts of the Bengali people, victims, and refugees. Um, so, you know, there is a dimension of positive and negative treatment uh, in terms of that um, the researcher has found that 14.4% of the reports were negative and only 35.1% was positive. So, um, I'll come to that later on. The article that changed the history uh, is uh, titled Genocide. I think you all know uh, Anthony Mascara has his uh, background and everything. Basically, he was a Pakistani journalist. He used to work for uh, Pakistani newspaper daily. Um, and at that time, he was very connected to uh, the mainstream Pakistani uh, journalist, and also he was trusted by the military um, rulers. So he, along with uh, some of the journalists, went to Bangladesh and saw whatever happening there. And the brutality took place in East Bengal. Um, he went back to London because um, he thought, from a journalistic perspective, he needs to produce something very neutral. And this is a big story. So uh, his sister was in London at the time. And he came to London, spoke to the editor of uh, Sunday Times. Uh, and his name was Harold Evan. And understandably, he was not allowed to produce that report at that time because his family was in Karachi at that time. So uh, everything was settled there, but he went back to Karachi, brought his family to London, and then the Sunday Times published the story. So this is very dramatic, I would say. And Indira Gandhi, in her interview, 
told that this story, this particular story, was something he um, considered very seriously. And the personal diplomacy we talked about, she took it from there because the brutality, the atrocity took place in East Pakistan was something is beyond any political composition. He went, she went to Russia and European countries for the support to uh, do the intervention from Indians' part. Another person, Simon Ring, Mishu is here, Mishu closely, Mahfuz Mishu, my colleague from Bangladesh, he closely worked with Simon Ring while he went to Bangladesh. Um, this person had a very interesting experience. I, I shouldn't use the word interesting. It's something very horrifying. But when 200 foreign journalists were confined in Hotel Intercontinental at that time, he went to the rooftop and uh, he managed to hide himself in the lobby. And he saw from Intercontinental what was happening in Dhaka University area. So he also produced a story for the Daily Telegraph. And the title of the story was Tanks Crush Revolt in Pakistan. And that was a very powerful story. Um, and sometimes I imagine a person aged 27 years, he had the courage to do the story like this. I have quoted his story from, from the beginning. The Daily Telegraph's report by Simon Ring in Bangkok who was in Dhaka during the fighting, in the name of God and the United Pakistan, Dhaka is today a crossed and frightened city. After 24 hours of ruthless, cold-blooded, try to understand the word he has used, very strong, powerful words. As a journalist, he has chosen um, the diction in a very uh, conscious manner, and that's why it was worth of attention for the wider readers and community. A uh, few years back, I met this gentleman, Mark Tali, at Lano School of Economics, and I had a personal memory with him. I asked him, you are very famous in Bangladesh. Do you know why? He said, why? Because I covered the war. I said, no. The way you presented uh, the radio journalism at that time, it was very authentic source of any sort of news, wartime news. So that's why everyone knows you, and uh, you've got a special space in uh, Bangladesh, particularly those who are aiming to be a journalist, uh, for many of them, uh, you are the role model. So he was very happy to um, hear that. A few days ago, I had a word with him. He's in Kolkata, uh, he's in India at this moment. And on behalf of London Market Peace Club, I invited him to join this program. But unfortunately, he is uh, he's in Ill, Ill health, so he, he couldn't make it. But um, he is another legend, I would say. And his coverage of war on BBC Radio was the people's chief source of uh, authentic information uh, because he was uh, the India correspondent for BBC at that time. And uh, later on, he was the bureau chief of uh, BBC India. Bengali. Um, as you know, that there are a number of Bengali newspapers at the time, uh, including Jonamot, Deshet Dak, and some leaflets. Uh, I, I shouldn't say leaflets. It's, it's a kind of uh, newsletter sort of stuff, just the propaganda. I didn't bring them into consideration, but Jonamot was something um, very, uh, I would say, prominent uh, source of news for Bengali community at the time. You see the first news, Agun Churiye Galo Shabkhane. It was in 1969. So the liberation movement, when Bengali people started uh, Choy Dofa, 69's uh, uprisings, and 70's election, John Amath has covered all those. So that is very important that the, the editorial policy of John Amath was very pro-Bangladesh, pro-people. And this first four issues that I've got from the archive, it doesn't have the logo or uh, the, I shouldn't say logo, the map of Bangladesh. But later on, I can see there is a map. So after the declaration of independence, John Amath has 
given extensive cover coverage for uh, the war Sheikh Mujib ke abulam bhi mukti dita hobe and later on uh, the last issue in 1971 was Pakistani Shotuni Uparajay I was just trying to find some of the newspaper uh, apart from Jonomot, Bengali newspaper but I didn't see any, any uh, archive or any copy of those, so I couldn't uh, show you. So apart from this print media coverage, I've got a BBC footage, which is the last footage I'd like to show, so that you can get an idea how the electronic media, or BBC, because apart from BBC, we have seen ABC, NBC news uh, from uh, other part of the world, but from BBC, we have got some news, I think. These are what your attention. Frank? Frank? India has asked UN Secretary General Font to use the influence of his office to stop what the Indian ambassador called the massacre of unarmed people in East Pakistan by the West Pakistan Army. Earlier, sources in India said that West Pakistan was continuing to bomb parts of East Pakistan, although the West claimed to have the rebellious province under complete control. And official sources say the Indian government has learned that the rebel leader of the eastern province, Sheikh Mujibar Rahman, is free and is not imprisoned as claimed by the West. Michael Clayton of the British Broadcasting Corporation was one of many Western newsmen expelled from East Pakistan the day after the shooting started. I was in the lobby of the Intercontinental Hotel in Dhaka last Thursday night when Pakistan soldiers suddenly hauled down the East Pakistan independent flag outside the hotel and burnt it. When I tried to leave by the hotel front door, they pushed me back at gunpoint. The army clampdown on Dhaka had begun. It was a ruthless exercise in intimidating the city's virtually unarmed population. Later on Friday from the hotel, we watched tanks rumbling through Dhaka's mostly empty streets. Occasionally, a few warning shots were fired to keep people indoors. There'd been very little resistance by East Pakistan independence volunteers. An ordeal by fire was the next phase in the army's plan to quell Dhaka's resistance to the central government. Huge fires were started, including the students' hostel and some of the most crowded housing areas. Wrecked cars marked the spot where during the night I'd seen troops demand surrender from local people. Then they fired into the alley and burnt down a pro-independence newspaper office. Trucks of ammunition and weapons were driven away by the Pakistan army after seizing them from East Pakistan police who'd cooperated with the independence movement. Some East Pakistani off-soldiers were also disarmed by the West Pakistanis. The army broadcast curfew warnings and wrenched down independence flags from Dhaka's shops and houses. There were tough penalties for showing the flag after that. Mr. Bhutto, the West Pakistan People's Party leader, was given safe conduct out of the Intercontinental Hotel. He'd been attending the constitutional talks with the president. The troops warned us they'd fire at cameramen, and this film was shot by a French team from the hotel windows. It's the only film to escape the rigorous searching by the military authority when we were expelled. The president's ambition, he says, is still to transfer power from his army to the people. But that goal seemed remote as the army ruthlessly established its control and inevitably bred still more resentment among the Pakistani community. Even when the curfew was lifted, the troops were to prevent gatherings of more than five people for the next three days at least. They clearly relished their role as the masters of East Pakistan. One can't estimate the number of dead so far in East Pakistan, but it would be impossible to fire guns for several hours in Dhaka and to set on fire so many buildings without causing considerable casualties. It's a desperately overcrowded community of people mainly living in shanty houses. The prospect of real resistance by the East Pakistanis is much better outside the towns. And if they organize an effective guerrilla force in the country, the East Pakistanis could in the long run still make it impossible for West Pakistan successfully to continue its domination from its power base 1,000 miles away. Michael Clayton, BBC News, reporting. Senator Stuart Symington said today the United States should... Thank you. Now, Farhan Masood Khan, the 
uh, another prominent presenter, television presenter and head of programs of uh, Channelless Television. And his topic is 50 years of Bangladesh achievement and challenge. Thank you for having Assalamu alaikum and thank you everyone for joining today's uh, event, London Mala Press Club event. And it gives me great pleasure. I'm really grateful to Ahmad Bhai and Jubarba and the whole London Mangla Press Club executive team for choosing me. I'm not sure if I'm the right person or not, but choosing me as a speaker to kind of give you my insight, my uh, thoughts on the successes and uh, the challenges of Bangladesh while we celebrate our 50 years of victory or freedom. Um, I'm not an economist. I would say I'm an observer. Um, I do, as ch in Channel S, as probably many of you know, I work as head of programs. I run a TV chat show called Obhimot, in English it's called Opinion, focusing on aspects or events of Bangladesh. It's a current affairs based program and for that reason, I have to be very connected with the issues and agendas of Bangladesh almost on a daily basis, probably uh, more than anything that I do uh, in my daily life. So from that context, I'll try to analyze, um, do, do my views of Bangladesh, my, um, my understanding of successes and challenges of Bangladesh. And I'm sure um, amongst us, many, many, many of my colleagues probably could have done better analysis or better uh, give us more information on this, but I'll try to do that for my capacity and my understanding. So 50 years uh, success of challenges. We are celebrating our victory day and a Bulbul Bhai and Ahmad Bhai has rightly said the formation of Bangladesh, which is not an easy matter, uh, which was a very struggling situation. And many of us are actually below 50 in this room. So we cannot just predict that we know all of these struggles and all of the challenges that our forefathers uh, have faced. But we know the history. And for me, it's always important to uphold the right history and pass this right history to next generation and of course amongst us. And here is a challenge in Bangladesh. Um, and I'm not going to add uh, the big detail into it. But what I would say, upholding right history is a progression, in my opinion. And if we struggle to face that history, then it is challenge. So the formation of Bangladesh was struggling, all, we all know that. And it was led, it was visioned and it was orchestrated by one individual, the father of the nation, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. And we all now recognize that. I'm just going to show you the impact of his legacy, an impact of his personality, an impact of his leadership amongst our people. We all knew the, March, the, uh, the um, announcement of 7th of March, and we all know how it had actually gave an effect into, a, into formation of Bangladesh. But recently, that speech has been recognized by UNESCO. And I would like to show that, that version of the speech. I wish to congratulate the people of Bangladesh for the inscription of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman's 7 March 1971 speech 
on the memory of the world register. This is your country's first inscription on the register. UNESCO's Memory of the World program was created to safeguard and promote humanity's unique documentary heritage for the benefit of all, for the knowledge of future generations. It contains over 400 treasures from all parts of the world, from clay tablets, manuscripts and films, to archives relating to historical figures such as Nelson Mandela and Alfred Nobel. It carries the memory of human experience. This inscription recognizes the universal significance of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman's historic speech. As he stated himself, Banga Bandhu pronounced his words with a heavy heart, conscious of the weight of his call. He stood before history with a deeply emotional summons for justice, emancipation, freedom, and human dignity. This is a speech deeply anchored in human experience. We know the bravery of the Bengali people and the tremendous sacrifice they endured in the subsequent liberation war. As Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina once confided to me, her father believed that if you do not educate people, you cannot make Bangladesh poverty-free. He said that financial freedom for women is key, giving them voice in the family. Under the leadership of Sheikh Hasina, the Prime Minister, Bangladesh has championed this legacy, investing in girls and women's education and literacy as the most effective means to fight poverty, early marriage and discrimination. You have always stood up to defend cultural diversity in the face of intolerance. I am proud that under my mandate we have advanced these causes together and that the role of your nation's founding father has been recognized on the Memory of the World Register. I am confident also that this inscription will be a source of pride and unity, of shared values and confidence in the future. And we all know that. And when a nation is formed, the first thing we think about how are we going to survive? And whether or not we have the means to survive. And given that Pakistan is a superpower in that time, and the other superpowers like USA, Saudi Arabia, other Muslim countries or uh, Arab countries are backing Pakistan. And we had limited options and limited opportunities to grow and escalate our potentials. And at that time, the founders of Bangladesh took some decisive decisions so that the country doesn't collapse, but with challenges as well. So I'm not going to the detail of the history here, but I'll just like to Comp compare where we were in 1970 and 71 and where are we now in 2020. Uh, the information I have, most of the information I actually gathered uh, pre-pandemic situation, so we don't, I don't have the figure uh, during the pandemic or uh, the figures of 2021, so we'll, f we'll try to um, uh, go as much as we can in terms of what happened during these two years. So if we for example, go to gross domestic product growth rate. So we all know that the GDP, how we uh, measure GDP and everything. So 1971, so our GDP was actually below the 
red line. So our economy was not growing. It was minus 5.48%. So 1%, so 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%, we now predict that our economy, our GDP were at the time before the pandemic around 8%. So at that time, it was below the red line. And not only below the red line, it was 5.48%. And now, in 2020, we have got 5.2%. And this is during the pandemic. And thank you. And the reason uh, it happened for the consistent of growth, and here I must say, every government since 1971 to 2021, every government they followed the structure of development and they didn't interrupt their previous government uh, whatever they have taken uh, to develop the nation or empower the nation they have they must have some uh, political differences and everything but when it comes to development or developing a nation they followed their predecessors and they followed their previous government and this is why it was a consistent growth and the consistent growth you have seen seen since 1980 and why 1980 and 2021 is consistent i would like to show that in my uh, next uh, kind of uh, presentation so per capita income again when i was a kid i'm just going to um, chillum class five year five year six or year seven um, i was i i went to carrot colleges and we had to memorize so many uh, general knowledge stuff like um, Argentina Rajasthani ko thay Bangladesh uh, per capita income ba matha pichu ay koto. To ramar mukhus to hoye gaye chilo. Jee Bangladesh matha pichu ay hote ke chash show dollar. Now 1971 ne, I'm talking about mid 90s. So 1971 ne shei uh, per capita income chilo 1000 dollar. 1000 dollar in today's economy you can imagine. Uh, Jee ita koto hote pare. 8000 takaro niche. So 8000 takaro niche chilo amader per capita income. And recently, Amar Kachi Atkir, I can 2020 figure at 2064 per capita income, Amar Dir, 264 dollars. But just two three days ago, Amar Janeshi, the Bangladesh Production Khan Bureau, the KTG, Bola Hoye Chhe, the 2000 dollar. So, since 1971 to 2021 October per month, Amar Dir per capita income bolche 20 So this is uh, again. Uh, the, the, this shows the Bangladesh Janagoner je resistance ability and at the same time Bangladesh Manush entrepreneurial skills, entrepreneurial ambition ATK uh, show kore. Diminishing poverty, protective government er ekti prathomic idea thakke je ki bhabhe amadir poverty ke eliminate kora chai. Ebon, aapnara nishchui janen je acta shumoy amra boltam, we used to say that amadir Bangladesh poverty or 50% or 60% or 70% act so much now we can clearly say the international organizations and other international bodies the prediction they have given to us is by the Bangladesh poverty J line at a severe poverty J line at a it era what's a beach bagger on 20% 10 niche I'm on the look to not second poverty niche, which is not enough we should be in a position, J. Amadir Lokjon Kamra Bobonaj, none of us are actually below the poverty line. But for that, the government needs, government and other organizations must act. Even Bangladesh has an ambition, J. By 2030, ATK 10% in Yasha. So now we have got 20% of uh, poverty line, Lokjon Jara below uh, poverty line, at say ATK 10% in Niasha Hotse, Bangladesh Ecti Ambition, Eti 2030 Mutta Tarakote. Even after an history, Janan, in 1971, Amother Poverty Situation Kitsilo, and how we survive. One of the prominent aspect or important aspect of uh, any nation, that their export ability. Jamra Ashole, Koto export Kori, because that export ability actually gathered. Amadir Jajama Hoy, Amadir J reserve, Amadir Jetiki reserve Polish. Amadir export ability prediction at Upore, Ashul Amadir reserve ability grow Hoy. Plus, Amadir remittance Amra Koto Patsi. She remittance among export ability, a dutal combination Hotse, Amadir reserve Koto Hoy. Ecti Deshe, Judi Timasher import ability Thake, She Deshke, Motamoti sustainable monocola Hoy. Jamon Sri Lanka Rache, Pakistan Rache. Bangladesh Akonkar J reserve. Ability at a shitty the Dosh Masher import 
আমরা করতে সক্ষম এবং আমাদের এখনকার রিজার্ভ প্রত্যেক মাসেই এটি উন্নতি হয় আমরা সর্বশেষ যে রিজার্ভটি দেখেছি সেটি হচ্ছে যে ফোর্টি ফাইভ বিলিয়ন ডলারের মতো এক্সাক্ট ফিগার আমাদের কাছে নেই বাট ফোর্টি ফাইভ বিলিয়ন ডলার আমি আসছি সে কিভাবে এই রিজার্ভটি আমরা গ্রো করেছি ফার্স্টলি আমাদের ইম্পোর্ট আর্নিং ইম্পোর্ট আর্নিং থেকে আমরা শুধুমাত্র এইটিন এবং নাইনটিন ইয়ার এইটিন এবং নাইনটিনে আমরা ফোরটিন পয়েন্ট ফাইভ বিলিয়ন আর্ন করেছি এবং নাইনটিন সেভেন্টি ওয়ানে এর ইম্পোর্টের এক্সপোর্টের এবিলিটি মানে একেবারে সাধারণ ছিল কয়েক হাজার কয়েক হাজার ডলার ছিল সেখান থেকে আমরা এখন এসেছি টু থাউজেন্ড এইটিন এবং নাইনটিনে ফোরটিন পয়েন্ট ফাইভ বিলিয়ন ডলার আরেকটা বিষয় আমি আগে বলেছি যে ফরেন কারেন্সির সার্ভিস উই দি এক্সপেক্টস উই আর কন্ট্রিবিউটিং টুয়ার্ডস দি ইকোনমি অফ বাংলাদেশ অ্যান্ড দি গভর্নমেন্ট দি গভর্নমেন্ট অফ বাংলাদেশ অ্যান্ড দি পিপল অফ বাংলাদেশ আর বেনিফিটিং ফ্রম দ্যাট আমাদের ব্রিটিশ বাংলাদেশে কিংবা আমেরিকান বাংলাদেশে বা ওয়েস্টার্ন যে আমাদের কমিউনিটি আছে ওয়েস্টার্ন কান্ট্রিগুলোতে কিংবা ইউরোপিয়ান কান্ট্রিগুলোতে যে কমিউনিটি আছে সেখান থেকে সেখান থেকে ওয়ে অথবা সিগনিফিকেন্টলি মোর ইম্পর্টেন্ট ফর দি ফর দি ইকোনমি অফ বাংলাদেশ হচ্ছেন আমাদের মিডিল ইস্টে যারা শ্রমিক ভাইয়েরা আছেন তারা দে কন্ট্রিবিউট এ হিউজ অ্যামাউন্ট অফ সাম ফরেন কারেন্সিস এবং রেমিটেন্স টুয়ার্ডস দি ইকোনমি অফ বাংলাদেশ অ্যাজ ওয়েল এজ ইউরোপে যারা আমরা ব্রিটিশ বাংলাদেশে বা ইউরোপিয়ান বাংলাদেশে আছি আমেরিকাতে যারা আছেন এবং কানাডা বা অন্যান্য দেশে যারা আছেন এই দুয়ের কম্বিশ কম্বিনেশনে ইম্পোর্ট এক্সপোর্ট এবং রেমিটেন্সের কম্বিনেশনে আমাদের ফরেন রিজার্ভ গ্রো হয় এবং এই ফরেন রিজার্ভ গ্রো কারণে কিন্তু আমরা যে দেখি যে হোয়াট ইজ ফরেন রিজার্ভ মিনস এটি একটি কোয়েশ্চেন আসতে পারে যে ফরেন রিজার্ভের কারণে আমাদের যারা ইন্টারন্যাশনাল ল্যান্ডার যারা আছে দে ফিল কনফিডেন্ট যে বাংলাদেশের ইকোনমি উইল নট কলাপস ওর ইটস ইজ নট ইন এ ফ্রেজাইল সিচুয়েশন ইটস ইন এ সাস্টেনেবল সিচুয়েশন অ্যান্ড ফর দ্যাট রিজন we can actually take a, take ambition of building bigger projects and better projects and the projects that we talk about quite often for the last few years again investment amra investment jokhon boli investment er ekta bishoy hocche apnar local investment ekta hocche government investment amra local market er kotha bolchi bangladesh has been driven by the private investors small investors they are the foundation of bangladeshi investment sector but eta ke empower kore foreign direct investment foreign direct investment unfortunately ekhane amader onek kichu korar ekhono baki ache foreign direct investment amra ekhono amader neighboring country theke onek onek pichone foreign direct investment 1971 e jokhon bangladesh form hoy Uh, beginning of 19 uh, end of 1972 amra matro 19000 dollars er fdi foreign direct investment amra receive korechilam eti ekhon bere giye dariyeche in 2019 e bere dike dariyeche 3.61 billion which is not a satisfactory figure because amra india te ebong china te jodi dekhi india te uh, china te er byapok uh, tader globalization er karone তাদের ব্যাপক ফরেন ডাইরেক্ট ইনভেস্টমেন্ট হয় এবং সেই কারণে তাদের ইকোনমিক গ্রোথ কিংবা তাদের যে জিডিপি গ্রোথ এটির ইম্প্যাক্ট তাদের দেশে যে পড়ে এবং সেম গোজ ফর ইন্ডিয়া ইন্ডিয়া এবং চায়না অনেক বেশি উন্নত অনেক বেশি ফরেন ডাইরেক্ট ইনভেস্টমেন্ট তারা কেটার করতে পারছে এবং অ্যাট্রাক্ট করতে পারছে ডিউ টু দেয়ার পলিসিস বাংলাদেশের ফরেন ডাইরেক্ট ইনভেস্টমেন্ট পলিসি ইজ নট আপ টু দ্য মার্ক ইনফ্যাক্ট ইট ইজ ভেরি পোর এবং সেইখানে কোন কোন চ্যালেঞ্জ আছে সেগুলি আমরা যখন আমরা চ্যালেঞ্জে আসব সেই বিষয়গুলিতে আমরা ডিসকাস করার চেষ্টা করব ইন্ডাস্ট্রি বাংলাদেশের ইন্ডাস্ট্রি আপনারা জানেন এগ্রিকালচার এবং ফুড সিকিউরিটি আমি এগ্রিকালচারে যদি আসি আমরা একসময় জানতাম যে বাংলাদেশ ইজ এ ল্যান্ড বাংলাদেশের কান্ট্রি অফ এগ্রিকালচার বাট সিন্স লাস্ট কাপল অফ ডেকেডস এই ডিপেন্ডেন্সি হ্যাজ বিন রিডিউস ডি টু দি ইন্ডাস্ট্রিয়ালাইজেশন অফ দি হোল কান্ট্রি সো যখন আমাদের ফর এক্সাম্পল ইন নাইনটিন সেভেন্টি ওয়ান এগ্রিকালচার সেক্টর ওয়াজ সিভিয়ারলি সাফার্ড ফুড প্রোডাকশন এবং সাপ্লাই চেন ফেস কমপ্লিট ব্রেক ডাউন ইন নাইনটিন টু দি নাইনটিন ওয়ার্ল্ড বাট নাও বাংলাদেশ ক্লেইম দ্যাট বাংলাদেশ ইজ এ 
ফুড এবং এগ্রিকালচারে বাংলাদেশ একটি সেলফ সাফিসিয়েন্ট কান্ট্রি অর্থাৎ আমরা নিজেরা নিজেদের খাদ্য উৎপাদন করতে সক্ষম এবং এটি এগেন হয়েছে বাংলাদেশের মানুষের স্পেশালি দি ফার্মার্স অফ বাংলাদেশ দি ইনভেস্টার্স ইন ফার্মিং ইন্ডাস্ট্রি অফ বাংলাদেশ অ্যান্ড অফ কোর্স গভর্নমেন্টের যে পলিসিগুলি ছিল সেই পলিসিগুলির সহজীকরণের মাধ্যমে আপনারা জানেন যে বাংলাদেশি গভর্নমেন্ট রেসপেক্টিভ গভর্নমেন্টস দে হ্যাভ বিন সাবসিডাইজিং দি এগ্রিকালচারাল সেক্টর সো দ্যাট আমাদের যারা গরিব ফার্মার আছেন তারা সাস্টেন করতে পারেন ইন্ডাস্ট্রি যেটি ইন্ডাস্ট্রি আমরা সবাই জানি ইন্ডাস্ট্রি হচ্ছে আমি ছোট ইন্ডাস্ট্রি এবং বড় ইন্ডাস্ট্রির কম্বিনেশনের কথা বলছি যে ইন্ডাস্ট্রি আমাদের নাইনটিন সেভেন্টি ওয়ান অলমোস্ট অল ইন্ডাস্ট্রি ব্রোক ডাউন হয়ে গিয়েছিল দি পাকিস্তানি ফোর্সেস আইদার দে হ্যাভ শার্ট দে হ্যাভ বার্ন অর দে হ্যাভ ডিস্ট্রয়েড অল অফ আর মেজর ইন্ডাস্ট্রিজ অ্যান্ড অ্যান্ড এন একটা ওয়ার্ল্ড ব্যাঙ্কের একটা এস্টিমেট ছিল in 1971 there are 4 4.3 million houses were burned or destroyed in 1971 so we can imagine je je kono deshe jodi 4.3 million houses or institution jodi burned kora hoy which is around 43 lakhs houses or institution jodi burned kora hoy ki thake sei desher if we now think about for example britain uh, britain er jodi apnar half of the houses 4.3 million er half hocche 2.2 million uh, 2 million houses or যদি ইনস্টিটিউশন আমরা বার্ন করি আর ব্রিটেনের কী অবস্থা হবে নাও ইমার্জিন দ্যাট ওয়াজ ইন নাইনটিন সেভেন্টি ওয়ান অ্যান্ড দ্যাট ওয়াজ দ্যাট ওয়াজ বাংলাদেশ উইদাউট এনি ফ্রেন্ডস সাপোর্টিং দি সাপোর্টিং এ নিউ নিউলি বার্থ নিউলি বর্ন নেশন ওই সময়কার কথা আমরা একটু কনসিডারেশনে যদি নেই বাংলাদেশ ডিড এক্সট্রিমলি ওয়েল ইন টু এবং বাংলাদেশের ইন্ডাস্ট্রি বাংলাদেশের এগ্রিকালচারকে পেছনে ফেলে বাংলাদেশ ইজ নাও মুভিং টুয়ার্ডস ইন্ডাস্ট্রিয়াল সেক্টর এবং সার্ভিস সেক্টর এই দুই সেক্টর বাংলাদেশের ইকোনমির এখন প্রাণ অ্যাক্সেস টু ইলেকট্রিসিটি অ্যাগেন আমরা যখন আমাদের একটা সময় ছিল বাংলাদেশে উই ইস টু জোক দ্যাট আমাদের ইলেকট্রিসিটি কখন আসবে উই ডু নট নো বাট উই নো ফর 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 মোস্ট অফ দি ডে টাইম ওর টোয়েন্টি ফোর আওয়ার্সের যে সাইকেল আছে Uh, we'll have load shedding in Bangladesh. But things has changed a lot, especially for last one decade. Uh, Bangladesh is 99% manush, akhon electricity is out there. Still there are load shedding, still uh, there are management issues, still there are issues that Bangladesh needs to address. But for that reason, uh, electricity capacity development is karone. Amra, akhon, we have phones everywhere. And uh, just to give you an example, বাংলাদেশের একটা ব্র্যান্ড আছে ওয়ালটন ওয়ালটন একটি লোকাল ব্র্যান্ড যারা গত কয়েক দশকে দে হ্যাভ ক্যাপচার দি ফুল বাংলাদেশি মার্কেট অ্যাজ ওয়েল এজ দে আর এক্সপোর্টিং অ্যাটলিস্ট ফোর্টি ডিফারেন্ট কান্ট্রিজ সো ওয়ালটনের একটা রিসার্চ বাংলাদেশে এভরি ইয়ার দি রেফ্রিজারেটার দ্যাট উই ইউজ ইন বাংলাদেশ সো এভরি ইয়ার দে ইনক্রিজ দে গেট এ ডিমান্ড অফ ইনক্রিজ ক্যাপাসিটি অফ থার্টিন পার্সেন্ট সো বাংলাদেশে যারা রেফ্রিজারেটার ইউজ করেন প্রত্যেক বছর তেরো পারসেন্ট করে এই রেফ্রিজারেটার ইউজেজের এক ডিমান্ড বাড়ছে ইন দি লোকাল মার্কেট এবং দিস ইজ অনলি টু ওয়ালটন নাও বাংলাদেশের যারা হায়ার মিডিল ক্লাস আছেন ও পিপুল উই আর দি উই আর দি উই আর দি হায়ার এন্ড দোজ হু ক্যান অ্যাকচুয়ালি বাই কোয়ালিটি ওর ইউনো ইউনো ব্র্যান্ড প্রোডাক্টস ইন বিগ ব্র্যান্ডস লাইক স্যামসাং ওর এনি আদার ব্র্যান্ডস I don't have the figure the ocean of the big brand that demand kotho tuku bere chhe but I can give you the figure of Walton and they say that the demand 13% every year bare and it's growing so that shows the buying power of the local people of Bangladesh and that gives the indication that the economy the buying power of a of of our people are actually increasing which is a very good sign for any economy and that was only possible because amader bangladesher access to electricity is now almost everyone we talk to our friends almost every day we talk to our family members almost every day and we can you know we see the change in terms of uh, in terms of their lives and the impact in their lives uh, due to the electricity supply and that has happened uh, because of the consistent uh, policies to empower our energy sector education um, there is a huge debate um, in terms of the educational development of bangladesh we say we have um, educated or we 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 have progress in human development 
for over the last five decades, and we say that we have uh, many A-star students, or those who have achieved in uh, golden stars in GCSEs, SSE exams, and HSE exams. But do they actually um, give the indication of our educational system? So there is a big debate. But in terms of education, uh, Bangladesh have got the literacy rate Ekhon uh, onik beshi Bangladesh literacy rate, ebong which actually uh, has risen 74.7% in 2019 from 26.6% in 1974. You can check, you can see around 50% of the literacy rate bereche in that 50 years, and it is growing. Ebong a literacy rate actually doesn't give you the indication of the educational system, and I'm coming to that educational system. Why we say that health system again. Uh, health for all, there is a policy in Bangladesh, but that never happened. This is one of our challenges, and I will address that issue in our challenge section. Life expectancy. Amra again, actually, Bhaptam, the Bangladesh manusher, 50 was a milestone, or 60 was a super milestone, uh, probably in 1990s or mid 90s, or you know, before uh, 90s. And we, we used to see uh, our friends, family members, um, uh, the, many of them. Uh, when they used to say uh, they're 60, we, 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 used to th we used to think that he had a good life. Because at that time, the life expectancy was around 50. In mid-19s, the life expectancy was 56. In, uh, 19, uh, in, in um, early, uh, uh, after the birth of Bangladesh, it was 46.6. And now in 2020, the life expectancy is 72.6 years. So that probably many would argue, so this is due to the improvement of the health system, but again, many would argue that this was n not relevantly connected to the improvement of the health system. This is due to the overall improvement of Bangladesh, and most importantly, the health consciousness, consciousness which has, uh, has been risen amongst us, amongst individuals. So that gave a proper um, sort of boost in terms of life, st life expectancy and which has taken us to 72.6 years in 2020 which was at the beginning of Bang at, at the beginning of 1970s or uh, early 70s it was 46.6 percent um, so again we have got many other issues in terms of uh, life expectancy we, we have health issues we have a gender parity um, we have done really well in gender parity and I will try to, I'll, I'll try to address in my challenge. My son, you have achieved LDC. We all know about LDC and middle income bracket. We, about, we know about MDG. These are international standards that Bangladesh needed to face, and Bangladesh achieved all of these milestones in a very short span of time. And that's why the international community actually see Bangladesh as one of the rising stars and one of the, one of the rising tigers uh, in terms of global economy. Economic growth. Economic, so in terms of challenges, I know um, we have got many popular agendas. We have got many issues that we always highlight. But the biggest challenge that Bangladesh face is corruption. And there is no hide and seek in this because all of the agencies, international agencies, put Bangladesh in, Bangladesh in the high ranking corruption achiever, unfortunately. So 26. On the scale of 100, Bangladesh is uh, 180 countries in the Bangladesh are almost 26, uh, and that is given by Apnula Shobai Jani in Transparency International. Puttik Bachor ekti report prakash kore Bangladesh shekhani achieve koroche 26, which is very damaging for a country like Bangladesh. Ebang e corruption e direct impact amader economy the, amader personal life e, amader shomoy kono shutrang ami oi bishoye jabo na. Right growth strategy Bangladesh er ekhon. Uh, amra jani je Bangladesh was right growth strategy khetre amra shob shomoy dekhtam je poncho barshiki porikolpona ba 5 bochorer porikolpona. Bangladesh has taken a delta plan jeta Bangladesh er 100 bochorer porikolpona ke cover kore but we have got very little information of that delta plan and uh, I'm sure a uh, delta plan er aro bistarito amra janbo agami koyek mash ba koyek bochorer moddhe and but that was an achievement but again a achievement will achieve kora jone je struggle. I'm not sure delta plan uno the shei achieve a shei struggle will address kora ache kena. 
আমি একেবারে শেষের দিকে যদি কয়েকটা বিষয় অ্যাড্রেস করি বাংলাদেশের ফিউচার এডুকেশন সিস্টেম সো দিস ইজ আই ওয়াজ অ্যাড্রেসিং ইন মাই প্রিভিয়াস ইন প্রিভিয়াস প্রেজেন্টেশন যে আমাদের এডুকেশন সিস্টেম কতটা ভঙ্গুর আমি আপনাদেরকে জাস্ট একটি ইনফরমেশন দিতে চাই একটা ইনফরমেশন যে আমাদের এডুকেশন সিস্টেম উই আর নাও বিলো আফগানিস্তান বিলো পাকিস্তান অ্যান্ড বিলো শ্রীলঙ্কা ইন টার্মস অফ এডুকেশন স্ট্যান্ডার্ড এবং এটি দিয়েছে একটি ইন্টারন্যাশনাল অর্গানাইজেশন এই এডুকেশন সিস্টেমের যে কোয়ালিফিকেশন যেটি সেটিকে তারা অ্যাড্রেস করে এটা দিয়েছে এবং দ্যাট উইল নট চেঞ্জ আমরা যতই এ লেভেলে স্টার বানাই না কেন বা গোল্ডেন স্টার বানাই না কেন দ্যাট দ্যাট উইল নট চেঞ্জ ইফ ইউ ডোন্ট চেঞ্জ আওয়ার সিস্টেম ইফ ইউ ডোন্ট চেঞ্জ আওয়ার হোল এডুকেশনাল সিস্টেম এবং এই সিস্টেমের জন্য গভর্নমেন্ট দি গভর্নমেন্ট তারা বলছে যে তারা কাজ শুরু করেছেন বাট উই হ্যাভ টু ওয়েট অ্যান্ড সি আসলে কতটুকু চেঞ্জ হয়েছে এবং ইন টার্মস অফ এডুকেশনাল স্ট্যান্ডার্ড আমরা ভারতকে মিট করতে পারি কিনা আমাদের সারাউন্ডিং নেশনের মধ্যে কিংবা আমরা মালয়েশিয়াকে রিচ করতে পারি কিনা দ্যাট টাইম এর ডাইরেক্ট ইম্প্যাক্ট আমরা ইকোনমিতে পাব ইন টার্মস অফ ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল সেক্টর রিফর্ম উই অল নো অ্যাবাউট করাপশন উই অল নো অ্যাবাউট ব্যাংকিং হাইস্ট উই অল নো অ্যাবাউট ব্যাংক আমরা বাংলাদেশের একটা কমন পারসেপশন হচ্ছে যে পিপল টেক লোনস ফ্রম প্রাইভেট সেক্টর ব্যাংকস ওর গভর্নমেন্ট ব্যাংকস অ্যান্ড দে ডোন্ট নেভার রিপেয়ার দোজ লোনস ইনফ্যাক্ট দে go to america go to canada go to come to uh, european countries and build houses buy houses and do rest of these terms and we always uh, often hear je bangladesher ekta begon para ache in canada which is very um, shameful and this is happening because we don't have the infrastructure in the banking sector in our, our financial sector and for that reason this is not decreasing the bank uh, loan jara nichen tara loan repay korchen na because the infrastructure is not there and this is going to be another biggest challenge for next bangladesh again amader onek guli challenge ache uh, one of the challenges we talk about uh, democracy human rights and freedom of speech je kono desher fundamental uh, issues hocche democracy fundamental issues hocche human rights if i'm not feeling safe in my own country i cannot put my input in that country i'll probably try if i have the means i'll probably try to flee the country and we have seen the rise of fleeing the country of we have seen the rise of many human rights violation and we have seen the rise of uh, rise of many violation of freedom of speech and jeta impact kintu european country gulite porche american ba onnano desh gulite porche so bangladesh ranked 76 in economist intelligence units democracy index 76 amader obosthan এবং এটি দেওয়া হচ্ছে টোয়েন্টি টু এতে টোয়েন্টি টোয়েন্টিতে বাংলাদেশ এখনও হাইব্রিড রেজিম হিসেবে ক্যাটাগরাইজ হয়ে থাকে হুইচ মিনস দ্যাট সাবস্টেন্সিয়াল ইরেগুলারিটিজ অফটেন প্রিভেন্ট দ্য ইলেকশনস ফ্রম বিং ফ্রি অ্যান্ড ফেয়ার অ্যাকর্ডিং টু দ্য রিপোর্ট বাই দ্য রিসার্চ অ্যানালিসিস ডিভিশন অফ ইকোনমিস্ট গ্রুপ সো হুইচ ইজ নট এ ভেরি ওয়েলকাম এন্ড হুইচ ইজ ভেরি অ্যালার্মিং ইনফ্যাক্ট ইফ উই কান কাস্ট আওয়ার ভোট অ্যান্ড এক্সারসাইজ আওয়ার ফ্রিডম আমরা উই ক্যান probably enjoy the lavish life and enjoy the economical prospect but we will not enjoy our life because we, we can't say anything can do anything can you know we can we, we can't just go beyond our uh, capacity we can't just go beyond our dream and let me give you an example i'm okay sorry you are just take two minutes i'll take two minutes yeah let me give you an example what is bangladesh jokhon amra kotha boli trust me 90% or 95% of my friends are really happy and really flourishing their life and really excited about bangladesh and that 2-3% left jara they are probably scared they are probably want to flee tara sujog khoje kokhon desher baire ashbe tara sujog khoje is there any opportunities in britain or america or any other countries and this is cool jo keno tara ashte chay because tara mone kore deshe security r obhab ache because tara mone kore je bangladesh Uh, they cannot exercise their rights they cannot exercise their freedom ekhon je bondhu guli amar kache eshob bolche they are not poor they are not suffering from economical uh, uh, economical aspect they are independent they are flourishing in their life but they're scared and that's scare that's scaring approach is also scare caring for bangladesh bangladesh jodi amra nijeder ke grow korte chai and if we don't exercise uh, if we don't allow people to exercise their freedom of speech ex, uh, human rights and democracy then the challenge will come unfortunately the challenge will come and that challenge i'm not sure if we are ready or not to face that challenge um i'm almost end of uh, end of my uh, presentation so eto kichu pore let me 
আমাদের চ্যালেঞ্জ যেগুলি আছে এত কিছুর পরে উই ক্যান অলওয়েজ সি দি ব্রাইটার সাইড অফ দি চ্যালেঞ্জেস অ্যান্ড দি ব্রাইটার সাইড ইজ পিপল আর নট টকিং উই হ্যাভ গট দি সোশ্যাল মিডিয়া হিউজ রেভলেশন উই হ্যাভ গট আদার মিডিয়াম ওয়ার উই ক্যান অ্যাকচুয়ালি টক অ্যাবাউট অ্যান্ড উই ক্যান অ্যাকচুয়ালি এঙ্গেজ উই ক্যান অ্যাকচুয়ালি টক পিপল টু পিপল অ্যান্ড দাস উই ক্যান অ্যাকচুয়ালি ফ্লারিশ এজ এ নেশন অ্যান্ড হাউ আমরা আমাদের যে এক্সারসাইজগুলি আছে সেই এক্সারসাইজগুলিকে কীভাবে আমরা এঙ্গেজ করতে পারি দ্যাটস the bangladeshi people must decide and uh, this is we cannot just give them our advice we just cannot say do this do that and do that from a western point of view i'm talking about of course we can as british bangladeshi we can talk but from a western point of view we just cannot dictate bangladesh that do that do this and do that let bangladeshi people decide their choices and when it comes to their choices they have to be very practical as well in terms of they have to be very uh, strategic ambitious as well as very humane to choose their decisions and exercise their rights and from that note i would like to conclude my speech and before i conclude i'm very optimistic about bangladesh i'm sure all of you are optimistic and when we see an international agencies showing my bangladesh our bangladesh in a positive way we must enjoy this and we must celebrate this this is a request to all of you and this is a request to the whole house and on that note i would like to show a video uh, developed by world economic forum showing the progression of bangladesh একটা দেশের গান এবং তারপরে যেহেতু দুটো বড় বড় লম্বা ইয়ে হয়েছে রুপি আপা মুস্তফা মিলন ভাই তারপরে আমরা উদয়পুর প্রেজেন্টেশনে যাব সবাইকে অনেক ধন্যবাদ অনেক সুন্দর আলোচনা মাঝে আমাদের একটু দেশের গান আশা করি আপনাদের ভালো লাগবে
पुष्पे पुष्पे भराशाटी पुंजे पुंजे बाहे पाकी पुंजरिया आशे उली पुंजे पुंजे भे तराफुले रुपार भूमि पाली भूलेर मधु भे आमोल दृष्टि को थाल को दे आबे ना भूमि शाको आमार जान मोहिनी सीधे आमार जान मोहिनी सीधे आमार जान Sir, BBC Bangla and his topic is uh, press freedom in Bangladesh. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I feel extremely humbled and greatly honored to have been invited to give this presentation on press freedom in Bangladesh when we are celebrating 50 years of the independence of our country. We have already heard about the role of the media in the UK during our War of Liberation in 1971 and also the achievements and challenges facing the media since our independence and also the successes and challenges. I must admit to very well thought out uh, presentations. Thank you Bulbul, thank you Farhan. We are all aware of the challenges that journalists generally face worldwide and in Asia in particular, notably in countries where democracy has not been firmly rooted. But despite these challenges, there is always a silver lining. And what better than the Nobel Committee conferring the Nobel Peace Prize this year to two journalists, Maria Ressa of the Philippines and Dmitry Muratov of Russia, for their relentless struggle to protect freedom of expression. Announcing the award, the Nobel Committee Chair said the duo were receiving the prize for their courageous fight for freedom of expression in the Philippines and in Russia. The committee considered Reza and Muratov to be representatives of all journalists who stand up for this ideal in a world in which democracy and freedom of the press face increasingly adverse conditions, they added. The recognition of the struggle for freedom of expression and independent journalism in Anderson's speech is also a source of joy and inspiration for us as journalists because we too are also part of that long struggle. <coughs> Though the phrase newspapers are a mirror to society is an overused metaphor, the situation of a country's media does reflect the nature of the state, whether it is democratic, autocratic, monarchical, authoritarian, or indeed one-party rule. The media's 50-year journey in Bangladesh is no exception. Its characteristics, purpose, 
and behavior over the five decades have transformed according to changes in the custodians in power. Accordingly, its development can be broadly defined in different segments of time, including two brief periods when the media enjoyed real freedom. The first period of real freedom was very brief, very, very brief, lasting about two years after independence, while the second episode took place following the restoration of democracy in the 1990s. In between those two periods involving the final years of the first government and two different military regimes, there were contrasting scenarios. Between 1973 and 1975, and between 1982 and 1990, there was stricter tightening of media freedom, but between 1975 and 1982, there was gradual liberalization of the media from state control. In post-1990s Bangladesh, after the restoration of democracy, we have witnessed a similar pattern. First, there was gradual liberalization, and then a new kind of control, which many observers described as the worst state of media freedom experienced in the country. Throughout the last decade, Bangladesh's ranking in International Media Freedom Index has been continuously falling, and it now stands at 152 out of 180 nations. Think about it, 152 is the position out of 180. Successive governments in Bangladesh have used various incentives and punishments in order to extract loyalty and subservience from the media. These include its powers over granting permissions for publication and broadcasting licenses, imposing restrictive import duties on printing materials and broadcast equipment, allocation of government advertisements, delaying payments of such advertisements, restricting access to public establishments and official functions, and also issuance of official and unofficial advisories. Besides the government, freedom of media in Bangladesh is also facing serious threats from the owners as corporate houses are relentlessly pursuing their own interests through exerting financial powers to influence news and opinion. Many of these business houses have launched their own newspapers or media outlets to advance their commercial interest and hurt their rivals, which makes objective journalism harder for those who work for these media platforms. Some businesses also use the promise of advertisements as a tool to suppress stories that might affect their trade adversely. Coming to 1972, going back, Newfound freedom after independence in the aftermath of a bloody war of independence, unsurprisingly, the first few years of governments were truly challenging. And just as the political environment was turbulent, the policies towards the media were also incoherent and inconsistent. The media, which had a long history of supporting political struggle for freedom against dictatorial regimes, and exploitation of the West Pakistani ruling class also celebrated their freedom. Many of those newspapers and magazines that had been forced to shut down during the Pakistani military crackdown started resurfacing. Those papers which continued publishing during the liberation war either were abandoned by their owners who fled to Pakistan or went into hiding or their editors were removed and replaced. There were exceptions though like The Observer, which was owned by a former Pakistani minister, Hamidul Haq Chaudhary, where the editor, Abdus Salam, kept his job under the new government. However, Salam lost his job in early 1972 after writing an editorial titled The Supreme Test, in which he called for the formation of a national government. From 1973 to 1975, gradual diminution of freedom was seen Sadly, there were too many other incidents where the state was not so tolerant. The press came under frequent attacks from both the government and the activists of the ruling party. Licenses of quite a few newspapers critical of the government, including Hok Kotha, published by Mona Navashani, were cancelled. Another prominent daily, Gonal Contour, known for its strong criticism of the government in association with newly founded opposition party, Jatiya Shamastrantik Dal, the JSD, had a typical relationship with the government. Though it initially got a contract with the state-owned printing press to print the paper and was housed at a property allocated by the government, 
It became a regular target of harassment and attacks, and its editor, poet Al Mahmud, was arrested. Similarly, publication of the holiday was suspended for two months in 1973 under the Press and Publication Act, and it was again proscribed on May 23, 1975, and its editor jailed under the Special Powers Act. The holiday editor, Anayatullah Khan, was subjected to unusually harsh and nasty criticisms. Khan had angered the ruling party earlier by questioning the very terminology of collaborator. In a leader article, titled 65 million collaborators. Those who were pr uh, present at that time, knew about journalism at that time, must know about this uh, famous article of 65 million collaborators. That was published in the holiday on the 6th of February, 1972. It was written in support of popular singers like Abdul Latif, Abdul Alim, and Ferdowsi Rahman, who were prevented from taking part in programs in Bangladesh, Betar, and Bangladesh television, as during the Liberation War, they continued performing in the nine months period of conflict. In 1973, the government brought in the Press and Publications Act, empowering the government to grant licenses for newspapers and for registration of all publications, including books. Then, on February the 2nd, 1974, it enacted the Special Powers Act, granting powers to the government to order preventative detentions for indefinite periods. Under the act, authorities could prohibit publication of any prejudicial report for the sake of maintaining law and order. On January 25, 1975, the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution was enacted, abolishing the multi-party parliamentary system and making Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman the new president of the republic. A new party under the name of Bangladesh Krishok Sramika Wamalik, Pakshal, was formed on February 24, 1975, with all powers related to the membership of the party vested in the hands of the president. On June 16, 1975, the government enacted the newspaper's Declaration Amendment Ordinance, under which publication of 29 daily and 138 weekly newspapers and periodicals were prohibited. Only two English and two Bangla newspapers were allowed to continue under the direct government control. Of the four, the Bangladesh Observer and the Donik Bangla were already under the government control. The other two newspapers were the Bangladesh Times, owned by Sheikh Fazlul Hakamuni, and the Bangla Daily Ittifaq, owned by A.S. to the late Tufajal Hussain Manik Mia. Hundreds of journalists lost their jobs following the closure of the newspapers, and most of them were offered jobs in government offices, and some in public relations, but others in various departments, including customs and excise. An international press freedom group, the International Press Institute, IPI, <coughs> beg your pardon, however, said in its 1975 annual report, the suspension on June 16 of all newspapers, except for the government dailies, marked the end of the last vestiges of the press freedom in the country. Thus, in three short years, the press passed from the virtual freedom of 1972 to total government suppression. Let us now look at uh, events from 1975 to 1982. Politics took a tragic turn on August 15, 1975, when a group of rogue army officers staged a bloody coup, killing Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman and his entire family, except his two daughters, the current Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina, and her younger sister, Sheikh Rehana, who were then staying in Brussels. Coup plotters installed a new government headed by Khundaka Mushtaq Ahmed, a close associate of Bangabandhu. But within a short period, two more coups and counter coups took place through which General Zia Rahman emerged as the de facto ruler, assuming the office of the president in April 1977. According to a noted a professor in the Illinois State University in the United States, a good friend of ours, Ali Riaz, the military government embarked on a series of policies which were diametrically opposed to those of the Mujib regime and consequently changed not only the system of government but also the nature of the Bangladesh state. That was Ali Riaz's writing. In July 1976, 
Zia Rahman enacted the Political Parties Regulations Act, resulting in the reappearance of political parties gradually with election held for president in 1978 and parliament in 1979. Reversal of media restrictions, however, began even before Zia Rahman became chief martial law administrator. In reversing Bakshal's governing system, the Mushtaq government also repealed the Newspaper Declaration Amendment Ordinance 1975, and as a result, banned newspapers got an opportunity to resume their publications. For many journalists, it meant the end of uncertainties and not having to quit their profession. General Zia Rahman later founded a new government-funded newspaper from the northern region of the country called Donik Bartha. Set up an institution for training of journalists, Press Institute of Bangladesh, the PIB, formed the Press Council as an arbitration body to deal with complaints against the press and granted lease of a piece of government land for the National Press Club. When he founded his own political party, he also launched a daily newspaper called the Donik Desh for promoting his party's policies and activities. Despite these actions in favor of journalism, the government's intervention into the editorial freedom did not end. According to the then president of Dhaka Union of Journalists from 1974 to 1978, Riyazuddin Ahmed, he said, journalists' demand for scrapping preventative rules of the Special Powers Act, including closure of publications and indefinite detentions of journalists, remained unheeded. A weekly named The Reporter was closed for publishing a list of alleged Russian agents in the country. Journalist Durgadas Bhattacharya was detained under the Special Powers Act and imprisoned. After the assassination of General Zia Rahman, his successor, President Sattar's civilian regime, also continued the practice of issuing so-called press advice within inverted commas. Press advice is the word. Examples cited by journalist Mahfuzullah in his book documenting the state of press freedom include an incident on April 26, 1982, when the government's advisory issued to the newspapers said arrests during the curfew should not be reported. It was argued that breaking curfew out of necessity by innocent people was not uncommon. But the government thought publications of such news would be viewed as a political challenge to the government. 1982 to 1980, that's when Lieutenant General Hussein Muhammad Ishad took power. When he took power in 1982, media advisories became embedded in state policy as a way of controlling the media. Ironically, General Ishad had told journalists immediately after assuming power that he wanted journalists to write freely with objectivity, which they could not under the previous BNP government. But it was his government which issued most of the written directives to the press, sometimes concerning matters which did not have any link to the affairs of the state. One such instruction was an instruction in November 1985 to publish a poem said to be written by him on the occasion of his visit to Malaysia. Eshad and his ministers used the tool of press advisories frequently, not only for promoting their activities or policies, but also to suppress unpleasant and inconvenient truths. On some occasions, advisories were issued to stop newspapers from reporting Eshad's speeches and comments. One such advisory issued on November 23, 1985, asked newspapers not to report or reproduce General Eshad's interview given to a UK-based weekly Jagoron. I hope you remember Jagoron. Dr. Taluk there. A great man. During Eshad's rule, journalists devised a new technique to inform readers about the opposition's action programs to avoid harsh consequences. As the government ordered newspapers not to report hartals, journalists used to write opposition calls for observance of a countrywide program, Hortal Nabole Bolto countrywide program, Jonagon Buzajetan. And readers immediately recognized it for what it actually meant. General Eshad devised a strategic approach to keep the media under pressure by organizing monthly meetings with editors where he referred disparagingly to critical coverage of his government. Several newspapers were forced to close, including the popular weekly Joy Jai Din, 
and its editor had to leave the country for some time. Shofi Grahamane kotha bolchi. Another weekly, Bichinta also faced closure during Eshad's rule. In February 1987, the pro Awami League newspaper, Banglar Bani, was also banned for a few months. Proscribing foreign newspapers and magazines too was a common practice. At one stage, when indications were evident that his fall was imminent following an unprecedented alliance in the late 1990s of two political force, Sheikh Hasina and Khaled Azia, Eshad sought to impose stricter pre-censorship on the media so that newspapers were ordered to get pre-publication approval from government officials. Journalists' unions and editors' council refused to accept this new policy and went on a strike which ended with the fall of the Eshad government. Shining but short-lived freedom, with the transition from military dictatorship to democracy following the mass citizen upsurge of 1990, press freedom did improve, though it did not last too long. Press freedom in its real essence in Bangladesh had a very short life in the 1990s. With the fall of Eshad, the caretaker government headed by the then Chief Justice Shahabuddin Ahmed was entrusted to hold a general election within 90 days following a consensus among all national political parties. The caretaker government, through issuance of an ordinance, amended the repressive provisions of the Special Powers Act under which the government had the power to stop any publication. However, occasionally the government did continue to issue press advice. After the election, which local and international observers have described as free and fair, the Bangladesh Nationalist Party, BNP, emerged victorious and Khalid Azia became the Prime Minister. However, her first term in office was marred with continued upheavals on several issues, including demands to switch over to a parliamentary system of government instead of the existing presidential form and to introduce a neutral caretaker system of government for conducting general election. Despite such turbulence, the media environment did undergo a limited but positive change. The government, for the first time, opened the airways for foreign broadcasters, allowing the BBC World Service to air their programs on FM frequencies. It also allowed the US cable TV network CNN to broadcast in Bangladesh. But it refrained from allowing private ownership of broadcast media within the country. The state-owned television and radio were allowed to cover opposition news, but in a very limited form. The election in February 1996, boycotted by all of the opposition parties, caused a nationwide violent protest. In Kandra Zaman, a reporter for the weekly newspaper Neil Shagod was fatally shot by security officers while covering the government's crackdown on a violent protest against election results in the northern town of Nilfamari. Until 2006, power had rotated between the Awami League and the BNP, but during this period, the state of the press freedom declined gradually and risks for journalists increased incrementally. In 1996, the Awami League returned to power for the first time since restoration of democracy and allowed private ownership of broadcast media with the launching of the news and current affairs station Ekushi TV along with the two others, ATM Bangla and Channel I for entertainment. However, journalists reporting on corruption and crime by party activists faced serious physical violence, including Tipu Sultan, a reporter of Potomalu. In 2001, the BNP revoked the license of ETV and security forces seized broadcast equipment, citing a court verdict on exclusion of private channels from terrestrial broadcasting. Newspapers and journalists critical of the government faced threats and were subjected to harassment. It was comparatively worse than the previous regime of Awami League, but after the change of government in 2009, the situation of media freedom worsened further. Three private TV channels that had got licenses during the previous BNP regime were shut down, along with the printing press publishing a pro-BNP newspaper, Amar Desh, and arrested the editor-publisher of that paper. According to the Committee to Protect Journalists, CPJ, five journalists were killed between 1996 and 2001, and between 2002 and 2006, the number of journalists killed was seven. The same historical data shows 11 journalists lost their lives between 2012 and 2021. From 2009 to the present day, 
press freedom in a new term. In recent years, media plurality has taken a very different meaning in Bangladesh as it is being portrayed only in total numbers of media outlets, not in the sense of divergent voices. In the early ages of independent Bangladesh, media meant only newspapers, as the electronic media broadcasting was fully under state control. But there has now been a mushrooming of both traditional media outlets and new digital media platforms. At present, there are 1,200 daily newspapers that have declarations in Dhaka and over 3,000 across the country, though it is not clear how many of these are actually publishing, and over three dozen TV channels. Sadly, such mushroom growth has nearly drowned out truly independent media and provided multiple propaganda tools to the party in power. Newsroom managers nowadays say that what they fear most is, within inverted commas, unofficial press advice, which is given from the other end of a telephone. This can be more potent than the previous written directives as they do not exist on paper and so cannot be challenged. But if defied can result in harassment, interferences in doing business, and even risk to personal safety. A leading global media rights group, Reporter Sans Frontier, RSF, in its 2021 annual report has said self-censorship has reached unprecedented levels because editors are justifiably reluctant to risk imprisonment or their media outlets closure. This is reporter Sans Frontier saying. Explaining the reasons behind self-censorship, it also notes there has been an alarming increase in police and civilians' violence against reporters. Many journalists, bloggers, and cartoonists were also arrested and prosecuted for the reporting on the pandemic and its impact on society. To this end, the government now has a tailor-made judicial weapon for silencing troublesome journalists. The 2018 Digital Security Law, under which negative propaganda with its inverted commas is punishable by up to 14 years in prison. According to figures compiled by Bangladesh's top Bangla newspaper, Prothomalo, since the enactment of the Digital Security Act in December 2018, an average of three people per day have had criminal cases filed against them under this law. Human rights groups say since the beginning of COVID-19 pandemic, at least 80 journalists have been sued under DSA, two have been killed, 70 have been injured, and at least five were subjected to enforced disappearances for varied periods. As the country is going through an unprecedented political transformation, challenges for survival of independent media and journalistic freedom are enormous. The 50-year journey of our media, sadly, has now reached a precarious state. In a recent article, Mahfuz Anand, the editor of the Daily Star, wrote, and I quote, compared to governments of mature democracies, elected leaders and the new ones, including ours, suffer from all sorts of insecurities and are super sensitive to every critical view, failing to even remotely grasp the logic of criticism as a cleansing process of governance. With the passage of time and growing differences, opponents in such democracies begin to be considered as enemies. The media, which publishes purely fact-based critical stories, is seen to be a part of that enemy. And as such, treated with suspicion at first, then with derision, and finally with attempted obliteration. Mahfuzanam also says, regardless of our favorite political item, our professional ethos compelled us to take our pen against injustice, corruption, cronyism, and political partnership. While earlier, patrol, while earlier patriotism meant fighting for democracy and against the military rule, present patriotism means unearthing misgovernments, abuse of law, and suppression of all freedoms, especially freedom to expression, which is the core of all other freedoms, regardless of the leadership of the day. In his view, journalists have failed to grab the fundamental ethos of our profession and have dragged the old partisan mind set into it, thereby hampering the growth of objective journalism which Bangladesh needs today. It lies at the heart of our transition to the status of a development country from an 
LDC. If nobody else, ladies and gentlemen, we, the journalists, who we pose to be journalists, let me put it that way, must understand this, must internalize it and practice it. That is our patriotism today. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes my presentation. Thank you for your patient hearing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Doda. We'll have the very brief uh, roundtable discussion on this topic. Only 15 minutes, and Doda, you need to join, and uh, it will be hosted by our president. Can I request uh, Madhul Hassan Bai, the former editor of Asian Age, Asian Age, then Samsul Alam Leighton, editor of Shurma, and Mohammed Balal, Balal Bhai former president of London Bangla Press Club and also the chief editor of Patrika. And we have guests from Bangladesh. We have a lot of people who are in the world. We have a lot of people who are in the world. Marcus Mishubai, Marcus Mishubai, channel Jumna Television and special correspondent. Jumna Television, we have a lot of people who are in the world. Marcus Mishubai, we have a lot of people who are in the world. Marcus Mishubai, we have a lot of people who are in the world. Hassan Bhai, Farhan Masood Khan, Farhan Masood Khan, Farhan Masood Khan, अगर हम सारा हम दूर लोग हैं पांच चंद ना बताओ मुझे कम्युनिकेशन सेक्रेटरी अब्दुल कायम बने हुए हैं कम्युनिकेशन सेक्रेटरी अब्दुल कायम बने थाके नाजबुल हसन आप अपने एग्जीक्यूटिव एडिट मेंबर प्रस्ताव भी रखों आपने उन्हें खेल प्रोजेक्शन बिहाइंड द सेम ऑफ दिस प्रोजेक्ट अब मैं अपने चले आशन आ Thank you very much. We are very thankful to you and London Baba Press Club is thankful to you for joining here tonight, giving you time and special thanks to our panelists, Udayda, Bulbul Hassan and Farhan Masood Khan because I know it is very hard to find time, give time somewhere. So, special thanks for their time and effort. And I believe because of their research and presentation, we have learned something. Everyone will go home tonight with enhanced knowledge about Bangladesh, Bangladesh challenge, Bangladesh media challenge, and so many things. And especially, I request all of our presenters who present, the panelists who present the papers, if possible, to provide us the written papers to our WhatsApp group or email so that we can learn, we can use, uh, because because of the presentation tonight, we have learned so many things, so many questions may arise. So hopefully, your uh, copy of presentation will help us and enlighten us. Thank you, everyone, especially also thanks to uh, Season of Bangla Drama, uh, London Bar, Tar Hamless, and everyone, including President and Secretary. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, hello everyone, and it's back to me again. Um, just quickly um, to talk about the long table. Just there's a few etiquettes, and you can enjoy, you can be part of this as well. Um, the long table was created by Professor Lois Weaver from Queen Mary University. It's part performance, part conference, part discussion. And the whole point is that sometimes some people find difficulty in going to a conference or a space. And this is one way to engage with all voices, keeping a very democratic way of talking. Um, in saying that, I'm actually supposed to be seated at the table when I say this, so probably isn't democratic, but um, just for today, I'm going to let it go. Um, so, so the um, long table is a performance. It's a dinner party conversation. Anyone seated at the table is a guest performer. So you're not just a journalist today, you're a performer as well. Talk is the only course, so you're the final course, the main course, and the dessert. Okay? No one will moderate, but a host may assist you. And for this, for today's purpose only, our, our president will be the host. It is a democracy. To participate, simply take an empty chair at the table. Currently, there are none, but if you want to seat and you want to say something, just tap on someone's shoulder if no one is speaking at the table. 
If you leave the table, you can come back again and again and again. Feel free to, we usually have a tablecloth on there, so we don't have a tablecloth, so I'm going to take that. There can be silence. There might be awkwardness. There could be laughter. There is an end, but no conclusion. Let's start the long table. Thank you, Rukshana. Uh, let's start. Uh, I think as there is no uh, moderator here, anyone can start. Let's start. We will have about 20 minutes to discuss. Altogether. Thank you. Altogether, yes. uh, total 20 minutes. And uh, I think uh, from what I understood before I gave the presentation uh, is that uh, we'll discuss about the presentation that I have given just now. Yeah. And uh, I think the house is open now. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you, Dada. Very brief history. And it's very interesting. In Bangladesh, history is one of the controversial matter in any aspect. But I think Dada tried to avoid that most of the controversies. Thank you very much. But acid test media in Bangladesh in terms of freedom and other things. Uh, what I can say, I can compare this situation about Snowden's right and uh, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. Julian Assange's rights. So Snowden is stuck in US, Russia, and Assange is stuck in uh, England. So who, who, what about in Bangladesh? In Bangladesh, Bangladeshi journalists are in acid test because government branded the critics, the critics, it is not only contemporary, but most of the time, anti-development, anti-democracy, even anti-state sometimes. And nowadays, something added that is uh, enemy of the nation, anti-liberation. So my friends who wants to write freely is really a test for them. I know a number of journalists who morally, uh, because they have right, I have right, and every journalist have right to support any religion, to support their culture, to support their view, anything. And they have very, they are very soft about the present government, but they are very strong. They are very good journalists, and they want to criticize the corruption, money laundering, voting, uh, looting of votes, and so many things because we got our independence for democracy and freedom of rights, freedom of speech. And people has lost it after 50 years. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure I can conclude this. When Bangladesh will celebrate century, definitely this generation and next generation will restore those rights. So as it is, that is our challenge in 50s. And definitely, that is for next 50s as well. My observation. Thank you very much, Udada. Yeah. May I? Yes. Yeah. But unfortunately, we will not be here in the next 50 years. But see, uh, whatever we have seen, we have to in see the, you as Nasiruddin. Shogat Shampadak Nasiruddin's case, 107. Definitely, yeah. that will be. <laughs> so will Udada's be. paper uh, spelled out everything that we have known. I mean, for, for people like me who saw the war, because we, we were teenagers at that time, so we saw the war, and we. In these past 50 years, it's, it's, a, it's a surprise that we're still alive. <laughs> yes. So, so uh, both of us, because everybody is uh, relatively younger than us. So uh, the, the paper was uh, was very reflective of the situation that we have in Bangladesh today, that we have had for the last 50 years. years. Thank you for, for giving us all this detail. Many of us have forgotten those dates and all that. Yeah. And, uh, like uh, in Atul Khan's editorial and uh, uh, with the uh, different uh, companies coming in. General Ishad's government, see, he, he coming in, he's coming in with advice. And the strange thing is, I've come across journalists in my, in my uh, professional life in Dhaka. I've seen w once, uh, uh, just a small incident, once when I was working at the New Nation newspaper, uh, that's, that was with the, with the Ittifaq, and General Ishad was making trips to all these different newspaper offices. And one day he decided to visit the Ittifaq and the New Nation. And Anwar Hassan Manju, the editor, come minister in Ishad's time, he wanted us to stay back. So we said, OK, because he was the owner and he was the editor, and we had to stay back. Once we were outside the editorial board meeting, two, two or three of my uh, companions, uh, the co colleagues, they were, they were very vociferous. They were very vocal about 
um, uh, about Ishad, against Ishad, why should we stay? Why should we, we be asked to stay and uh, welcome a dictator? But when Ishad came at, uh, in the evening, it was Maghrib time, I still remember, these very three journalists, <laughs> they were the first to jump up and shake <laughs> So you see, so that, that's what as it that is. Uh, as it is. Uh, uh, I'll be very brief. The, uh, after going through all these uh, presentations, and thank you very, very much. That was a detailed one on Bangladesh's successes. A long and one as well. Yeah, but that was detailed. Yes. So, what I what I would like to point out, in case anybody anybody has noticed, in Bangladesh's media, especially uh, our newspapers, we don't have cartoons anymore. See? Yeah. Especially, especially after that incident uh, with, uh, with with yes, with uh, Allo. The cartoons are a very effective way yes. of Criticize. conveying a message. You just have one cartoon and then everything is understood. That's the whole story. That's the whole story. And then what we have is, I, I blame journalists also, for our own community, because over the years we have grown, uh, in, instead of projecting journalism as such, we have, project, we have been projecting partisan journalism. So that is that is a, a dangerous thing, and then if you look at the if you uh, take up the question of of uh, journalist unions, we have divided unions. So and it, there, there used to be a time when journalist unions were very powerful. I remember if any any person any journalist was sacked from any newspaper or was threatened with dismissal, journalist union leaders would immediately go and meet the owner or the editor, and the matter would be solved. Now we don't have any any journalist union to fall back on because we have we don't have uh, journalism of the old-fashioned kind. What we have is corporate journalism, and corporate journalism can sack me, can keep me, can reduce my salary, whatever. So, and one other thing that has uh, that has been noticed in Bangladesh's media lately, we have we, we have newspapers in the country. Now, see soldiers, see uh, uh, soldiers, see they retired at, at at a particular time. Doctors keep on working until they are unable to work. Journalists keep on working. The, the more you age, the more gray hair you have, See? you you become better journalists. And, and in, in Bangladesh, if you, if you look if you, if you look at our, our media, our television, for example, you have all these young people, young men and young women. The moment that they notice your gray hair, you are retired. So same thing before that. Before that. And the same thing has, has been happening in some newspapers in Bangladesh, leading newspapers. I will not, I will not name them, but you know, they have adopted a policy of uh, retiring journalists yeah, who have yeah. reached the age of 60. Yeah. And the men who made that policy, they are almost in their mid-70s. Yeah. And, yeah. and, yeah. and, and, and they remain as editors. They, they remain as editors. <laughs> so, uh, they remain as editors. And again, there are so many editors. See, uh, 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 there should be, there should be a, 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 a point when an editor should retire, let's say, at the, uh, after 10 years. After 10 years, in our country, let's see, editors keep on. And, they, and these very editors, they sometimes will argue with you, why are these political leaders in, still in charge of, of, of politics, still in of, uh, political leadership? So that's the, and finally, yes, uh, corporate, and I just, uh, uh, we are only asked to uh, uh, present constructive journalism. So that means do journalism, which is in, in my favor. And uh, one last point, in the, in the late 1990s, if I, if I remember, I, I, I do remember in fact, so not that old yet, so, so uh, the, uh, a very powerful team, media team, headed by Mr. Asaf Dola, the former yeah. bureaucrat, and comprising such men as KG Mustafa, ABM Musa, um, uh, they, they came to Bangladesh, uh, they came to London, and earlier they had, they had gone to Malaysia, they had gone to India, and then they came to the, to the United Kingdom. The reason? They wanted to study everything here so that they could present a paper, present a, 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 a plan of autonomy for Bangladesh Preta, Radio Bangladesh, and for Bangladesh Television. So, and of course, we were all surprised. Why do you have to go to India? Why do you have to go, come to London? Why do you have to go to uh, Kuala Lumpur? You can always frame uh, <coughs> policy. But anyway, they came, they went to Dhaka, they formulated the policy, they handed it over to the then Minister of, of the Minister of State for Information, so right. Professor Abhisai, and that was the end of the policy. Nobody ever heard of it. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. uh, basically, uh, I want to say one thing, basically, that... Two minutes. Okay, thank you very much for reminding me. So, in Bangladesh, if we can see the uh, number of medias are increasing gradually, but uh, this is the corporate culture started in last 10 and 15 years as well. Uh, I think most, uh, half of medias 
is taken over by media mogul and business owner, like corporate owner. Uh, we, we know very well that uh, television, online, I mean digital uh, newspaper, and also, also printing newspaper is taken over by one uh, business owner. So this is really alarming situation for us. And nowadays, basically, editor, they are also scared to talk about them. So this is very important issue for us. Thank you very much. So, okay. yeah. That's uh, Thank you. Yeah. It's tough for me as I am working in Dhaka, and I have to work <laughs> in Dhaka again. Uh, it will be easier <laughs> for me if you allow me to talk in Bangla. Yeah. No problem, sure. আমার কাছে দাদার প্রেজেন্টেশন থেকে কোনো কিছু আসলে বাদ যায়নি পুরো ইতিহাসটা এবং সেটা যেটা বলে যে একদম শুরু থেকে কখনোই তো আসলে আমরা স্বাধীন ছিলাম না মানে গণমাধ্যমের স্বাধীনতার যে ধারণা সেই ধারণার সঙ্গে আমরা কখনোই খুব বেশি দিন আমরা বসবাস করার সুযোগই পাইনি এবং দিন যত যাচ্ছে আমাদের সিচুয়েশন তত খারাপ হচ্ছে একটু আগেই এই ব্যাচটা যখন দেওয়া হচ্ছিল তখন সমস্ত বদরুল ভাই বললেন যে ফ্রিডম ফাইটার বদরুল ভাই বলছিলেন যে উই আর ফাইটার অ্যাগেন্স্ট ফ্রিডম বিজ্ঞাপন দাতা বিভিন্ন রাজনৈতিক দল তার চেয়ে অনেক বেশি আমরা নিজেরা করি এটার একটা বড় উদাহরণ আমি অব্দার রেকর্ড বলতে পারি সবশেষ কুমিল্লায় যে ঘটনাটি ঘটলো সাম্প্রদায়িক সহিংসতার ঘটনা সেটি নিয়ে কোনো টেলিভিশন প্রথম দুদিন কোনো নিউজ করলো না আমি টেলিভিশনের মানুষ আমি সতেরো বছর ধরে টেলিভিশনে কাজ করি তো আমি একটা পর্যায়ে আমার অফিস নিয়ে একটু ইন্টারেস্ট করলাম তখন ছুটি পেয়েছিলাম যে জিজ্ঞেস করলাম যে এটা আসলে আসলে কী কেউ নিষেধ করেছিল তো আমার ওই দিনের সকালের যিনি ডিউটি নিউজ এডিটর ছিলেন তার রেসপন্স ছিল যে সে আসলে একাত্তরের দিকে তাকাচ্ছিল যে একাত্তর দেয় কি না মানে একাত্তরের একজন নিউজ এডিটর কথা বললাম উনি বলছেন উনি সময় টিভি থেকে তাকাচ্ছিলেন ওরা দেয় ফলে সময় দেয়নি বলে একাত্তর দেয়নি একাত্তর দেয়নি বলে যমুনা দেয়নি যমুনা দেয়নি বলে টোয়েন্টি ফোর দেয়নি আসলে কেউই দেয়নি হ্যাঁ দিস ইজ সেলফ সেন্সরশিপ এবং কোনো এজেন্সি তথ্য মন্ত্রণালয় ডিআইপি পিআইপি প্রেস কাউন্সিল কেউ কাউকে ফোন করে না এই ঘটনা ফর গড সেক আমি নিজে সেটি সাক্ষী দেয়ার ইজ অ্যানজাইটি আই থিঙ্ক বিহাইন্ড হ্যাঁ এখন এটা আসলে অ্যানজাইটি নাকি এটা একজন আত্মসমর্পণ সেটি হচ্ছে আর একটা ডাইমেনশন সেই ইস্যুতেও কথা বলা যায় দ্বিতীয় যে ইস্যুটা এটা হচ্ছে সেলফ সেন্সরশিপের মাত্রাটা বোঝার জন্য বললাম দ্বিতীয় জায়গাটি হচ্ছে ওনারশিপের জায়গাটা ওনারশিপের জায়গাটি হচ্ছে এরকম ধরেন একটা টেলিভিশন কেন হয়েছে একুশটা টেলিভিশন একটা আলাদা উদ্দেশ্য নিয়ে হয়েছিল এবং তার পেছনে যারা ছিলেন তারা শেষ পর্যন্ত থাকতে পারেনি পরবর্তী সময় আমরা যমুনা গ্রুপ বলি বসুন্ধরা গ্রুপ বলি হামিম গ্রুপ বলি এরা টেলিভিশনটাকে বা অন্য যারা কেউ রাজনৈতিকভাবে ফালু সাহেবের চ্যানেল বলি কিংবা আপনার হামিম গ্রুপের চ্যানেল বলি বা আমাদের যমুনা গ্রুপের বলি এদের আরও অনেক বিজনেস সেই বিজনেসগুলোর অনেক কাজ করার জন্য একটু আগে দাদা বলছিলেন চিটাং অফিস সবার অনেক বড় হয় দাদা অবাক হবে চিটাং টেলিভিশনগুলোর অফিস আরও বড় হয় চিটাং আটজন নয়জন করেসপন্ডেন্ট থাকে পাঁচ ছয়জন ক্যামেরা পার্সন থাকে এবং যে কোনো টেলিভিশনের জন্য ঢাকায় সবচেয়ে কঠিন কাজ হচ্ছে চিটাংয়ের গুরু চেপ নির্বাচন করা কারণ দিস গাই নো হাউ মাস প্রেশার হিয়ার টু ডিল এনবিআর এর সঙ্গে অথবা বন্দর কর্তৃপক্ষের কাছ থেকে মাল ছাড়াতে শুল্ক ফাঁকি দিয়ে সেগুলো তাদেরকে করতে হয় ফলে মিডিয়ার মালিকানার যে জায়গাটা আপনি কাকে মিডিয়া দেবেন কাকে আপনি লাইসেন্সটি দিবেন এবং তিনি তার দুই হাজার কোটি টাকা রাজস্ব ফাঁকি দেওয়ার জন্য আপনার কোরসপন্ডেন্ট ইউজ করবেন এবং এটা করেন এটা খুবই নোট কালচার এটা খুব গোপন কিছু না এটা অব দ্য রেকর্ডও কিছু না সবাই করেন হ্যাঁ আমিও জানেন এবং এটা সবাই করেন পত্রিকার মালিকরাও করেন ইন্টারেস্টিংলি ফলে আপনার তো ওই যে কি বলে নিয়তের জায়গায় সদিচ্ছার জায়গায় তো প্রশ্নটা থাকছে ফলে সেটা একটা বড় ক্রাইসিস হয়ে দেখা দিচ্ছে তৃতীয় জায়গাটা হচ্ছে বিশেষ করে টেলিভিশন নিয়ে পত্রিকা বদরুল ভাইরা যখন পনেরোই আগস্টে একটা প্রোরপত্র ছাপেন পত্রিকা সেটির জন্য টাকা পায় তো র্যাবের প্রতিষ্ঠা বার্ষিকীতে আমরা যখন পাঁচ মিনিটের বিজ্ঞাপন চালাই এবং সেটা নির্দেশনা দেওয়া হয় সেটা দশটার বুলেটিনের আগে চালাতে হুইচ ইজ দ্য মোস্ট এক্সপেন্সিভ টাইম প্রাইম টাইম একটু টাকাও দেয় না বঙ্গবন্ধুর জন্ম শতবার্ষিকী নিয়ে একটি টাকাও দেয় না কোনো কিছু নিয়ে দেয় না কোস্টগার্ড পর্যন্ত টাকা দেয় না আপনি আর র্যাব আর্মি বা অন্যদের কথা বাদ দিলাম সশস্ত্র বাহিনী দিবস সশস্ত্র বাহিনী দিবস একটি টক শো করতে হবে গেস্ট তাদের ইস্যু তাদের কোশ্চিন তাদের আমাদেরকে করতে একটি টাকাও দেয় না এবং তারা পিক আওয়ারগুলো করে ফলে ইন্ডাস্ট্রি হিসাবে টেলিভিশনকে দাঁড়ানোর যে জায়গা সেই সুযোগটা দেয় না বাংলাদেশ হচ্ছে পৃথিবীর একমাত্র দেশ যে দেশে বাড়িতে আপনি যে টাকা যে টাকা দিয়ে আপনি টেলিভিশন দেখেন স্যাটেলাইটে পাঁচশো টাকা এক হাজার টাকা একটি টাকা আমরা পাই না সেই টাকা পুরোটাই এখন যুবলীগ পাই আগে যুবদল পেত 
একই বাড়িতে তার একবার টেনে দেয় সে তার বিশ বছর ধরে থাকে অথচ সে প্রতি মাসে এক হাজার টাকা করে নেয় এবং সেই টাকাটি কেউ পায় সেই টাকাটা তারায় না এখন যুবলীগ সেটার নেতৃত্ব আছে কোথাও কি বলে ওই জাতীয় পার্টির যে যুব সংগঠন তারা এটা এক ধরনের অনির্ধারিত নিয়ম রয়ে গেছে ফলে টেলিভিশনগুলোকে তখন নানা কারণে টেলিভিশনের মালিক ম্যানেজার সম্পাদক যারা তারাও এই আপসীকরণ প্রক্রিয়ার ভিতরে ঢুকে যান কারণ তাদেরকেও টিকতে হয় রাজনৈতিক চাপ তো নিঃসন্দেহে আছে কিন্তু আমার কাছে মনে হয়েছে এই সময়গুলোতে কাজ করতে গিয়ে আমি এই সরকারের সময়েও নাইকো এবং নাইকো মামলায় গ্যাস উদ্দিন আল মামুন এবং জনাব তারেক রহমান তারা যে ঢাকা ব্যাংকে ঢাকা ক্লাবের তৎকালীন চেয়ারম্যান সভাপতি সেলিম সাহেবের অ্যাকাউন্টে টাকা ঢুকছে অনেক কষ্টে আমি সেই কাগজপত্র উদ্ধার করলাম আমি জানেন নিয়ে কাজ করি একদম স্ট্যান্ডার্ড চার্টার্ড ব্যাংকের স্টেটমেন্ট নজরুল ভাই সেই স্টোরি একবার গেছে যমুনা টেলিভিশনে তারপর এটা বন্ধ করা হয়েছে এবং স্টোরিটা ছিল তারেক রহমান এবং গ্যাস উদ্দিন আল মামুন সেই টাকা নিয়েছে আমার ম্যানেজমেন্ট বলল না আমরা খালেদা জিয়ার পরিবার নিয়ে কোনো স্টোরি করতে পারবো না এই এমন তিন বছর আগের কথা বলছি দেহ সাম্প্রেশন এমন কি সেই স্টোরিটা ইউটিউব থেকে ফেলে দিতে হয়েছে ফলে পেশার সরকার যেরকম ফলে পরিবারও একটা পেশার মানে শেখ হাসিনার পরিবার যেরকম খালেদা জিয়ার পরিবারও সেরকম একই রকম ভাবে আপনাদের মনে আছে বদুল ভাই সাক্ষী গ্রামের ফোন মাস্তানে প্রচুর লোকজন ছাটাই করল এবং প্রায় ছয়শোর মতো লোক শহীদ মিনারে দিনের পর দিন অনুসরণ করেছে এই নিউজ আপনারা কোথাও এক এক কলমও পান নাই কারণ সেটা গ্রামের ফোন প্রাণের প্রাণের বিরুদ্ধে আপনি কোথাও কিছু পান না আপনি প্রাণের যে জুস আপনি গিয়ে নেপালে খান সে একই জুস আপনি ঢাকায় খান যে চিপস আপনি গিয়ে নেপালে বা সেভেন সিস্টার্স থেকে আমি খেয়েছি সেই চিপস আর ঢাকায় বা রাজশাহীতে যে চিপস আমরা খাই সেটা এক না কিন্তু সেটা নিয়ে কেউ নিউজ করতে পারে না আমরা একবার করলাম যমুনা টেলিভিশন করলো কারণ তাদের সঙ্গে তাদের ল্যান্ড নিয়ে একটা ঝামেলা হয়েছিল যে কারণে আমরা প্রাণ নিয়ে সময় ফেললাম ফলাফল হচ্ছে প্রাণ আমাদেরকে আর বিজ্ঞাপন দেয় না প্রাণ বিজ্ঞাপন না দেওয়া মানে হচ্ছে বাংলাদেশের টোটাল বিজ্ঞাপন ইন্ডাস্ট্রির ফর্টি থ্রি পারসেন্ট টেলিভিশনের এককভাবে প্রাণের নিয়ন্ত্রণে ফলে আমরা ফিনান্সিয়ালি বিপদে পড়ি ফলে এই যে কর্পোরেট কর্পোরেট যে চ্যালেঞ্জ এটা সরকারের চ্যালেঞ্জ আওয়ামী লীগের চ্যালেঞ্জ আর্মির চ্যালেঞ্জের চেয়ে অনেক বড় চ্যালেঞ্জ এবং এই জায়গাটা আমরা সবাই মানে হার মানি আর একটা হচ্ছে কেবল অপারেটর কেবল অপারেটরের যে কি ভয় ভয় একটা নতুন চ্যানেল আসবে সে বোঝে যেমন যমুনা গ্রুপের কথা বলে যমুনা টেলিভিশন যখন শুরু হলো প্রথমবার হঠাৎ করে ধানমন্ডি আমার বাসা সেখানে যমুনা টেলিভিশন দেখা যায় না এদিক সেদিক করে কোনোভাবেই ম্যানেজ করা যায় না পরে কেবল অপারেটরের দুইটা গ্রুপ তারাই ইয়ে করলো তাদেরকে ফ্রিজ দিতে হবে না কারণ যমুনা গ্রুপ ফ্রিজ বিক্রি করে তাদেরকে ফ্রিজ পাঠানো হয়েছে সেই ফ্রিজ সিঙ্গেল ডোর তাদের পছন্দ হয় না এসে ডাবল ডোর ফ্রিজ পাঠাতে তাদের একের পর এক জিপি করে এরকম একই জায়গায় হঠাৎ হঠাৎ বন্ধ করে দেয় ফ্রিজ কি তাদের অফিসে ঘটনা সাম্প্রতিক সময় ওই যে ডাক্তার সাবরিনা রাইট ইয়ের সঙ্গে তিনি টেস্টের কাজ করছেন ওই ভদ্র মহিলা যে তিনি অ্যারেস্ট করলেন তা আমরা সব নিউজ চ্যানেলগুলো এখন দুটো করে স্টোরি বানাই একটা হচ্ছে মূলধারার টেলিভিশনের জন্য আর একটু একটু বড় করে রং চং মিশায় দ্যাটস ফর ইউ অনলাইন ইউটিউব ফেসবুক বিকজ ওইটা অনেক বড় সোর্স অফ ইনকাম বাংলাদেশের একটা টেলিভিশন আর টিভি তাদের মূল চ্যানেলের চেয়ে সেখান থেকে তারা নাকি আইটি শিখ হয় তো সেইটা করতে গিয়ে জাস্ট ওয়ান মিনিট ওই ইউটিউবে যেটা থামনেল হয় যে ছবিটা সামনে থাকে সেই ছবিটা একটি প্রতিষ্ঠিত চ্যানেলের নিউজ এডিটর ইয়াংরাই কাজ করে সচ ইউটিউবে সে সাবিনার একটা ব্যাক শট পুরো পিকটা দেখাচ্ছে সেটাকে থামনেল করছে দের ওয়াজ এ ভেরি সেন্সিটিভ লেডি নিউজ এডিটর শি অপোজ দ্যাট যে এটা থামনেল হতে পারে না সে সেটা ক্লোজ করছে পরবর্তীতে সেই চ্যানেলের ওই একই স্টোর ওই দিন অন্যদের টনিক ভিউ হয়েছে তাদেরটা কম ভিউ হয়েছে সেই চ্যানেলের সিও এসে সেই নারী নিউজ এডিটরকে স্যাক করছেন এবং স্যাক করে ওইটাকে আবার থামেন করছেন ফলে আমরা যখন ইথিক্যাল জার্নালিজমের কথা বলি তখন আপনি না গিয়ে সেই পিঠ টাকায় আসলে বিক্রি করলেন এবং সেটার জন্য সেই ভদ্রমহিলাকে চাকরি হারা চলে ফলে এইটা আর একটা নতুন চ্যালেঞ্জ হয়ে উঠছে আমাদের জন্য যে আমরা এই ইউটিউবের সঙ্গে কিভাবে এই ফাইটটা করি ফলে দ্যাটস এ বিগ চ্যালেঞ্জ এইসবের ভিতর দিয়েও আমার শেষ কথা হচ্ছে যে আমরা এত কিছুর পরেও কিন্তু কিছু না কিছু করছে ফলে বাংলাদেশ ব্যাংকের টাকা পাচার বলেন যে কোনো দুর্নীতির কথা বলেন যতটুকু জানা যায় এর সব কিছুই কিন্তু বা এই সাম্প্রতিক সময় স্বাস্থ্য খাতের যেগুলো এর ভিতর থেকেই করতে হয় ফলে আমরা ঠিক কী অবস্থায় থাকি এরকম ঘটনাও ঘটে যে অনেক ডকুমেন্টস পাওয়ার পরে আমরা নিই না বিশেষ করে রোজি নাপার ঘটনার পরে এই প্রবণতাটা রোজি নাপার ঘটনাটা আমা
রচিত করেছে যে আমি একটা ডকুমেন্ট পেতে গেলে ভয় লাগে যে আমাকে আবার ফাঁসাই কি না এবং এগুলোর ফলাফল কি হয় ধরেন আমাদের সবশেষ বিজ্ঞান প্রযুক্তি সচিব যিনি আনোয়ার হোসেন এই ভদ্রলোক ছিলেন আশুগঞ্জ পাওয়ার কোম্পানির চেয়ারম্যান হোয়েন ইউ ওয়াজ অ্যাডিশনাল সেক্রেটারি অফ পাওয়ার ডিভিশন তো আশুগঞ্জ পাওয়ার কোম্পানির যিনি এম বিএ তিনি পাঁচ হাজার কোটি টাকা নিয়ে তার ছেলের অ্যাকাউন্টে পাঠিয়ে উনি দেশ ছেড়েছেন সেই স্টুডেন্ট আমি করছিলাম ওনার ইন্টারভিউ করছিলাম তখন চুরি করে মানে গোপন ক্যামেরায় তারপরে উনি এক দেড় মাস উনি ওয়েসডি থাকলেন তারপরে তাকে বাংলাদেশের সবচেয়ে বড় মিনিস্ট্রির সবচেয়ে বড় যে প্রজেক্ট রূপপুর নিউক্লিয়ার পাওয়ার প্রজেক্ট সেটার সচিব করে তাকে বসা উনি অভিজ্ঞ হয়ে গিয়ে সেই সেই ওটা 1 লাখ 30 হাজার টাকা প্রজেক্ট পরবর্তীতে কদিন আগে আমাকে ইয়াফস মান সাহেব বললেন যে আপনার রিপোর্ট ঠিক ছিল ইজ এ ভেরি ব্যাড গাই উনি রিটায়ার করার পর তখন তাহলে আপনি বিচার করেন রূপপুরেও এরকম হয়েছে ইয়াফস ওসমানের ভাষায় বলে জানেন এখন তার কি হবে বলিস ঝগড়া জনগণেটলি <laughs> সেই তিন জোটের রূপরেখার মধ্যে যেটা ছিল যে স্বায়ত্তশাসন সেটা তো আজও হয় নাই এবং বিটিভির যে একটা কত বড় ইনফ্লুয়েন্স মানে থাকতে পারতো বাংলাদেশের সোসাইটিতে বিভিন্ন এডুকেশন আমার একটা ন্যাক আছে আমার ইন্টারেস্ট আছে ওই জায়গাটা আমি দেখবার চেষ্টা করি এডুকেশনটা বাংলাদেশের একেবারে মানে আমরা আমরা সাংঘাতিকভাবে ডেকলাইন এবং এত এত দ্রুতগতিতে নিচের দিকে যাচ্ছি আমরা আমি জাস্ট যদি আমি দেখি যে গত দুই বছরে ওয়ার্ল্ডের ওন সেকেন্ড ওনলি বোধ হয় সরকারের ওই লজিস্টিক সাপোর্ট নাই ওটা নাই ওটা নাই এটা আমি হয়তো মেনে নিলাম কিন্তু আমরা কোন জায়গায় যাচ্ছি আমার এক বন্ধু বোস্টনে থাকে একটা ইউনিভার্সিটি টিচার তো ওর একটা প্রেজেন্টেশন ছিল কার্টুন নিয়ে কথা হচ্ছে যে শিশিরের কার্টুন আর আমরা দেখতে পারি না বা ওরকম একটা ও একটা কার্টুন দেখিয়েছিল ও একটা টক শোতে একটা কার্টুন দেখিয়েছিল যে একটা কার্টুন হচ্ছে যে খুব একটা ছেলে পিয়ান একটা ছেলে খুব পরিপাটি খুব চলটু লাচ ছাড়ানো ওর সামনে ওর ওর টেবিলের সামনে একটা সুন্দর একটা ডেস্কটপ কম্পিউটার আছে সে কাজ করছে আর তার বন্ধুটা যে গরিব ছেঁড়া কাপড় জানালার অনেক দূরে জানালার বাইরে থেকে উঁকি দিয়ে তার ডেস্কটপ দেখছে আর কি আসলে এই একটা কার্টুনই বলে দিচ্ছে বাংলাদেশের কি অবস্থা মানে এডুকেশনের অবস্থা মানে সাংঘাতিক কাহিন এটা নিয়ে মানে আমার মনে হয় যে মিডিয়ার এই জায়গাটাতে মানে সাংঘাতিকভাবে এক যুগে ওটা ওটা ওটার উপর এমফোসিস দেওয়া দরকার ধন্যবাদ কারণ আমরা বাংলাদেশের জার্নালিজম নিয়ে অনেক কথা বলি বাংলাদেশে আমাদেরও কিছু বন্ধু কিংবা বড় ভাইয়েরা আছেন যারা জার্নালিজমের সাথে আছেন এবং আসলে তাদের অ্যাডভাইস করতে হয় বিকজ অফ দেয়ার কারেজ এবং প্যাশন দুইটাই একটা এই স্কুইজ একটা লেমনের মধ্যে তাদেরকে কাজ করতে হয় সেখান থেকে এসে জার্নালিজম করে এবং কিছু ব্রেকিং নিউজ করা সেটা অনেক বড় সাহসের বিষয় জাস্ট বিশ্ব ভাই আই জাস্ট ওয়ান্ট টু নো ইউর ক্যান্ড অফ এক্সপিরিয়েন্স অফ দিস আমরা এখানে পলিটিক্যাল প্রোগ্রামগুলো করি বেসড অন বাংলাদেশ এবং কিছু কিছু পলিটিক্যাল প্রোগ্রাম বিকজ উই আর আউট অফ বাংলাদেশ সিভিয়ার কোয়েশ্চেন টু অ্যাম্পারেস দি গ্যাস্ট ওর চ্যালেঞ্জ দেয় তো এরকম একটা এক্সপিরিয়েন্স সাম্প্রতিক সময়ে 
আমি নাম বলছিলাম একটা মিনিস্টার আসছিলেন আমাদের চ্যানেলে এন অফিস মিনিস্টার যদি প্রোটোকল ফরেন অফিস থেকে মানে বাংলাদেশের ফরেন অফিস থেকে লোক আসছেন আশা করি এখানে এবং আমি সবাইকে অ্যাজ ইউজুয়াল আই জাস্ট মেনটেন মাই ফরমেট আই জাস্ট গেট এভরি ওয়ান আউট এক্সেপ্ট দি মিনিস্টার এটা যে কেউ এখানে বাংলাদেশ ব্রিটিশ প্রাইম মিনিস্টার যদি আসেন আই হ্যাভ টু গেট আউট আপ বিকজ ইটস ইস লাইক সিস্টেম ঠিক আছে সিস্টেম আমি বের করে দেওয়ার পরে এন্ড অফ দি প্রোগ্রাম দে ওয়াজ এ পিএস ওর এ পিএস হোয়াট এভার দি ক্যাটাগরি ওয়াজ তার হি চ্যালেঞ্জ মি ইন দি সেন্স যে যে আপনি কিভাবে একজন মন্ত্রী মহোদয়কে এই ধরনের একটি কোশ্চেন করতে পারেন এন্ড দেন আই জাস্ট পলাইন দি আস্ক হিজ নেম আপনার নাম কি আপনি কি এখানে থাকেন নাকি বাংলাদেশে তো এখানে থাকলে আউট অফ ডেন উইথ ইন ইন অ্যানাদার ওয়ে বিকজ হি শুড নো দি রুলস এন্ড রেগুলেশনস অফ অফ ব্রিটেন এন্ড দেন হি সে সে বাংলাদেশ থেকে এসেছে is an apps of that particular list then ami take bollam to je ami apnake porai ki bolchi you go and ask your minister je what is the protocols for this camp probably he knows that because they need file chilen they need puchhe you know desher rules are there and if you come to the uk next time apni ekta porashona kore ashbe fantastic jante kore amra and that happened because amar kache dharona hoyeche ki je je tomra bangladesh e dhoroner acharon korte obosto you could probably exercise the same method and analogy here okay. as well because are ekhane jehetu aro she jodi amake privately take niye bolta aur you know treat him differently because he was so uh, like overworked uh, <laughs> uh, overreacting the whole thing in front of my colleagues and his colleagues ekhane tar colleague aur colleague er samne so i just thought i should take the opportunity to give him some advice ami 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 30 second ni yeah. yeah. তারপর <laughs> 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 এবং এরকম বহু ঘটনা হচ্ছে যে আওয়ামী লীগ বিএনপির লোকজন একসঙ্গে আছে আমাদের যিনি মালিক ছিলেন প্রয়াত নুরুল ইসলাম বাবুল উনি একটু অ্যান্টি গভর্নমেন্ট সবসময় তো হয়তো ব্রেকে গিয়েছে বাবুল সাহেব ফোন দিয়ে বলছে এই টেলিভিশনটা তো আওয়ামী লীগ বানায় ফেললাম আর হয়তো একটা এজেন্সি থেকে ফোন দিয়ে বলছে টেলিভিশনটা তো পুরো বিএনপি বানায় ফেললাম আর ছয় মিনিট পর আবার আমাকে প্রোগ্রাম করতে হচ্ছে দুই জনের ট্রেনটা বাঁচায় দিয়ে আমি তিরিশ সেকেন্ড লন্ডনে বসে আমি তখন বিবিসিতে আমি নাম বলবো না মন্ত্রীকে ইন্টারভিউ করছি ইনকাম যে 2000 অথবা আড়াই হাজারের যেটা আমি এটা জাস্ট একটা কারেকশান দিই আমি ওয়ার্ল্ড ব্যাংকের ডেটা যেটা দেখলাম আই অ্যাপ্রিসিয়েট ইট ওয়াজ ভেরি নাইস প্রেজেন্টেশন বাট নাইনটিন সেভেন্টি টুতে আমাদের ছিল নাইনটি ফোর ওয়ার্ল্ড ব্যাংকের ডেটার দেওয়া থেকে বলছি তিরিশ বছর পরে দু হাজার সালে সেটা হয়েছে চারশো ষোলো ডলার এবং দু সালে সেটা হয়েছে উনিশশো আটষট্টি ডলার এটা কিন্তু ট্রু এখন কথাটা হচ্ছে যে একা বাহাত্তর থেকে তিরিশ বছরে এসে চার গুণ হলো এবং এরপরে বিশ বছরে এসে আরও পাঁচ গুণ হলো দ্যাটস ফ্যাক্ট কিন্তু মজার ব্যাপার হচ্ছে ওই যে স্ট্যাটিস্টিক্স সম্পর্কে একটা কথা বলে যে লাই তিন রকমের একটা লাই সুপার লাই অ্যান্ড স্ট্যাটিস্টিক্স আই নট ক্রিটিসাইজিং ইয়ে এখানে দেখবেন দ্য সেম ডেটা আমি সেম সোর্স থেকে বলছি অ্যাট দ্য সেম টাইম আমরা যে দেশগুলোর সঙ্গে কম্পিট করছি পার কেপিটা ইনকামের দেশগুলোর নাম বললে তাহলে আপনারা সিনারিও পেয়ে যাবেন কঙ্গো কঙ্গো আমাদের চেয়ে একটু বেশি ওয়ার্ড টন কান্ট্রি আপনারা জানেন যে একেবারে এবং ফেল্ড স্টেট বলতে গেলে 
আরেকটা ফেল স্টেটের নাম হচ্ছে অ্যাঙ্গোলা তিন হাজার দুইশো চোদ্দো ডলার আসলে পার ক্যাপিটাল ইনকামগুলো এগুলো ইকোনমিক ডাইনামিক্স না নদীতে সাথে যে মানুষ যায় আর এক্সট্রিম পোভার্টি টোয়েন্টি এইট পারসেন্ট আমি ট্রিবিউনের জানুয়ারির চোদ্দো তারিখের ডেটা বলছি টোয়েন্টি এইট পারসেন্ট এবং পরিকল্পনা মন্ত্রী আমাকে নিজে বলেছেন যে গত দু বছরে এই করোনার কারণে বিশ লক্ষ এক্সট্রিম পোভার্টি আরও বেড়েছে